What's up and welcome to another live unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we've got the Asus ROG Ally, the latest handheld to be released just a couple of days ago and I have been putting this thing through its paces, fully testing it out on a variety of uh, resolutions, bunch of different games, um, I figured out a bunch of tips and tricks that I can't wait to share with you in this video. Um, we're going to go through a setup guide on how to, how I set up my Asus ROG Ally. We're going to go through all the little tips and tricks that I figured out as I have used the device. Um, we're going to talk about maximizing your battery life on this thing. We're also going to be testing this at a variety of resolutions. So we're going to go down to HD, which is 720p. We're going to bump it up to full HD, 1080p. We're going to do a couple of QHD uh, gaming tests as well with an external monitor. And then we've got an ultra widescreen monitor right back here. We're also gonna try a few benchmark tests on the ultra wide monitor. And yes, it can actually play some games on the ultra wide monitor at 3840 by 1080p resolution, which is just freaking insane to me that a little handheld running on battery could even think about running ultra wide gaming at all. Like, but it can actually in some AAA games, get decent frame rates um, and have a fairly enjoyable experience on that ultra wide monitor. So we're not gonna do a lot of testing on there, but we're just gonna, I'm just gonna showcase that it's possible. Um, though obviously many titles will not also run at that high of a resolution. So it's gonna be hit and miss depending on what you're doing. So we're also gonna talk about uh, how you can upgrade your SSD in the Asus ROG Ally, as well as a micro SD card upgrade, what you should look for in your micro SD card. Um, and I do have a bunch of links in the description down below to the Asus ROG Ally. Where I bought it, I bought this from Best Buy, and there's this is not sponsored in any way by any companies, but if you do use the links down below, it does help support me as a content creator, so thank you very much if you do use those links uh, if you find this video helpful. Now, um, I have links in the description to the various accessories that I'm gonna be using today, including the wireless keyboard, that's a gaming keyboard, uh, the wireless mouse, that's a gaming mouse, the Thunderbolt 4 dock, though this is only USB-C, so you can't fully utilize the Thunderbolt 4 port on this device uh, because you know, it doesn't have a Thunderbolt port because it's a Ryzen processor, um, but you can still utilize that Thunderbolt port. I don't think that the Razer Thunderbolt port is or dock is probably the best value dock out there for this because it is a rather expensive dock, relatively speaking, but it is the only one that I've been able to get working properly with the, um, the RG Ally. Now I did buy a cheaper one off Amazon and had it shipped one day delivery just so I could try seeing if I can get a cheaper one to work, but the HDMI functionality was not working properly for outputting the video signal. So that was kind of a deal breaker, which made me lean back towards um, at least using the, the Razer Thunderbolt dock for this video. Now, if I find another dock that I think is very relevant or, or works well with the Ally, I will link in the description uh, when it's you know when it's time. So uh, when I, whenever I find that. So I hope you guys find this video uh, live stream helpful. And if you do, please hit that like button and do consider subscribing for future content as well. So I'm checking out chat retro game forty four. Me only here. Nah, I wish I could be. I wish I could buy them. Uh, so another another. Big thing that uh, we're gonna be talking about today is how does this thing stack up against a gaming laptop? Cause you know, many of my audience out there are all about gaming laptops. And so for someone who is a traditional gaming laptop user, is this something you could viably upgrade to if you have a really old gaming laptop? Um, or is this more of a side grade thing? Uh, like you have this and a gaming laptop or this and a gaming desktop perhaps. Uh, we're gonna talk about, I guess, the most applicable users that are gonna be most interested in this. I think most of you already know that, but I'm gonna give you my thoughts on all of that as well. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing um, of this device. Uh, I guess we can also go through the um, we can also go through the different accessories that I'm recommending real quick uh, as well. Can, so we can... let me pop over to the live and we'll just go through. So we got the Razer Thunderbolt dock, the Logitech keyboard, the wireless mouse, and these are a little bit expensive. We're also using the Mon Duo display or, um, for basically putting out the, uh, the video out from the, the ally, um, for some of our testing today, uh, for QHD 
and also just so it's easier for the camera to pick up the, the benchmark data and everything. Um, but so this is the Razer dock. It's a Thunderbolt 4 with Chroma. It costs 329. You can also get obviously cheaper docks with USB-C. Uh, just know this is the one that we'll be using basically for today's video. The Logitech G915 is the keyboard that I'm using. I've you've been using this keyboard for a while now. The battery lasts a long time and it's been working really well for me. It is a little bit expensive, but it's also um, light speed as in very competitive in terms of being a wireless keyboard. Um, and I do use it on my couch sometimes uh, when I'm gaming, sitting, you know, hook my gaming laptop up to the TV and plug that in. I can use that for wireless gaming. Uh, the SteelSeries Aerox 3 is a light honeycomb wireless obstacle gaming mouse. $89, it's been working really well for me, but the battery life doesn't seem to last that long. So I don't know how much I can recommend this one. Um, I do have to plug it in every few days. Otherwise the battery does run out. Now there is a few different SSDs you can get out there that are two terabyte, 2230 SSDs. And this is the kind of SSD size you're gonna need if you're gonna get an ROG Ally SSD upgrade. And this is definitely one of the better uh, SSDs that I think you can get. There are some other options. There's a little bit cheaper. Uh, like I know there was like a Micron SSD on Newegg that was I think $190. So it's a little bit cheaper than this one, but I do rock two Sabrent SSDs in my Blade 18 and I've been using them for a few years now and I've had no problems with those SSDs. Now I did buy this micro SD card slot, the Extreme Plus one terabyte micro SD card slot and our micro SD card. And I gotta say the performance has not been amazing for game loading. It it does work. And but it but I can tell that you know the, the transfer speeds on this card are not ideal. And I think ultimately uh, well, you certainly can use this one. You're gonna have to expect longer load times. It says up to 200 megabytes a second for read and write, but that is not sustained read and write speeds. That's on a burst. So like, for example, when you're downloading the games onto this card, it just took way longer than it takes to download onto the normal SSD. So just know that if you do go this route, instead of going say with the Sabrent, I would rec I would just highly recommend going with like the Sabrent two terabyte SSD because the the uh, speed in which you're gonna be able to play your games, load your games are gonna be just so much better um, of a user experience than if you just go with a micro SD card slot. Now the micro SD card slot is obviously a little more versatile because you can pop it in, pop it out without taking the, the ROG Ally apart, but it's still not gonna be the same quality of experience. I feel like this, uh, like using an X, uh, if you're gonna use a micro SD card, you might wanna focus on getting a higher sustained read and write speed uh, SD card. This is definitely one of the higher quality ones, but I'm pretty sure that there are some even higher quality micro SD card slots out there. So if you know any that you'd recommend, uh, please share them in chat or in the description down below. Um, looking primarily for sustained read write speeds that are you know closer to 100 megabytes. I'm pretty sure this goes down to like 40 megabits per second. Uh, when you're dealing with sustained, not a burst. So we're gonna be using this Mon Duo um, display system to, to uh, show off the dock. We're gonna dock to this monitor today. Um, and then this was an alternative micro SD card slot that I was gonna potentially recommend the Samsung Pro. Um, I'm not sure, I have not tested this, but it's rated at the same V30 speed, so hard to say if it's actually gonna be much faster. But this was very cheap at $42.99, much, much more cost-effective storage expansion than going with the one, uh, like a two terabyte SSD or the two ter uh, one terabyte um, micro SD. So this might be the much more cost-effective option for you. And there are, of course, links in the description down below to all of these if you want to check them out. So. Without further ado, let's go into the unboxing phase, check out what's in the box, and then we will get docked and start doing our benchmarks and go through all my tips and tricks as well for the ROG Ally. So, Kaylin says, out of the box, doesn't seem ideal settings, not optimized like Steam Deck, but for those who like to tinker with settings on the go, very cool, we'll see today. I've been blown away, honestly, by the ROG Ally's performance levels. Um, like, in my initial testing, this thing, uh, I know, I, like, I, I recently did a matchup with a laptop versus a gaming laptop, right? Sorry, the Steam Deck versus a gaming laptop um, that are, are you know, around the same price point. And the thing was, uh, a lot of the games 
are gonna be very CPU bound when you do benchmarks. Uh, at 720p or 1080p, um, just th these CPUs are not super high throughput for ultra high frame rate gaming. Um, and when people are doing a lot of their benchmarks with the ally against the Steam Deck, I believe what's happening is there, you know, a lot of them are being very CPU bottlenecked in their benchmarks. And that has caused a lot of people to say that the ally is only like 15 or 20, 30% faster than the Steam Deck, which may be true when you're talking 720p resolution and lower graphical settings. But when you are pumping this up to 1080p resolution or even higher, like we are gonna to do today, we're gonna to test it, like I said, on the ultra wide monitor um, for at least a couple of the games, you're gonna see that this thing has way more graphical throughput than the Steam Deck by more than 15%. So for people that are looking to play at higher resolutions, at least 1080p or higher, or uh, on external monitors in a dock scenario, the ROG Ally, I think, is going to be hands down a much better choice. So yeah, so there's the ROG Ally box. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at how this thing is packaged in here. So um, it had two little plastic uh, stickers on here. I had to take those off or cut them apart. And then when we lift it up, you can see there's the ally right there. I did my best putting the plastic back on there, but it's not quite perfect. Um, now, overall, I really like the rigidity of the ROG ally itself. And like when you hold it in your hand, it feels, I don't know. I, I think it feels just as premium as the Steam Deck. But at the same time, I like the way certain things feel on the Steam Deck a little bit better. Like I like the, um, I like that there's little touch pads on the Steam Deck, but also I like the simplicity of this. Like this is just your standard controller setup with a, two joysticks and one D-pad, X, A, B, Y uh, buttons here. You got your shoulder buttons and your trigger buttons on the top on both sides. And then of course you have rear buttons, buttons as well. You've got this holographic strip that I think looks really cool. I like that. And we also have uh, actual RGB circles around each of the joysticks. When we turn this thing on, um, I guess you'll see that once I re-enable the lighting because I actually turned it off because when I was playing games, the RGB lighting actually kind of gets in your face a bit and can be a little bit um, disruptive, I think, to your gameplay. Now, this does come with a 65 watt power adapter. You can see right there, it says 65 on it. And that is how powerful of a power adapter you're gonna to want to deliver to the Ally through, if you're gonna get an external dock or whatever. Because basically, if you're going to use the Ally in a dock scenario, you want it to be able to boost to the highest um, GPU clock, which requires at least 30 watts of continuous power delivery at a minimum. But I've seen the Ally boost up to 50 watts of power consumption, um, at least for short periods of time. Then it kind of comes down and maintains usually around 30. But I have seen it maintain closer to 40 sometimes. Just depends on the game and the scenario. But we've got a whole bunch of games that we'll be testing today. Um, so I'm really excited to share all of that with you guys. Now, another thing that they include in the box, right here in the top, is a little stand. So this is just a very basic stand, but it lets you um, put the ROG Ally in a like set up position, which makes it easy to um, you know set it on a desk, uh, have vertically, or to now I'm going to use it so that I can now plug in the external monitor and keyboard and mouse and still be able to use the device if I wanted to. Um, but we are going to mainly be using the external monitor when we're actually looking at the the data and everything. Now, in terms of ports, we have. Let me go ahead and zoom in here on this guy. All right, so uh, we have our power button. This is a fingerprint sensor. This is gonna let you log in with Windows Hello. It has not been working very well for me in my experience. It only works probably 50% of the time when I put my finger on there. And as far as I know, I'm putting my finger on there pretty dang well, and it's just not really picking it up very cleanly. We have our volume up and down. 
Um, and the only complaint I have about the volume uh, in general is that in Windows 11, it's a one to 100 volume levels. And so if you wanted to press this, you'd have to press it 50 times to get the volume to go all the way from minimum to maximum, or you have to hold it down and it takes a few seconds to go all the way from zero volume to 100 or vice versa. And I really wish there was a quick way to mute the volume um, or to quickly, more quickly with only like 10 taps to make the volume move all the way up and down. I do prefer that uh, if Windows were to change it, it'd be much better. Now, uh, to where it was like only 10, 10 intervals to go from zero volume to 100, that would be a better interface. Our, our actual um, power port is right here on this USB-C, but this is the XG mobile port. You can actually plug in the entire uh, external GPU interface right here on the XG mobile port and run an uh, eGPU. Uh, which is basically like a large, um, a large little box that sits next to um, the device. I can go ahead and pull this up real quick. Uh, let's see. Does does Best Buy have any for sale right now? Um, so Best Buy does indeed have some for sale. They got the RTX 3080. I would not recommend this at 14.99. Um, maybe this 68.50. XT1 799, that's probably a pretty good deal. Um, and it's gonna give you a lot of performance um, for the money. Now, the best one obviously is gonna be the RTX 4090 variant, but that's probably gonna be about $1,500. But that would basically give you 4K high FPS gaming um, and much more future proof um, in terms of overall FPS. Now the 6850 XT is also gonna give you awesome performance, like a high to mid range gaming laptop, essentially, if you pair this ally with the 6850 XT. And of course, this uh, XG Mobile also doubles as an external dock with an HDMI and display port, networking port, and four USB A's out. So you can easily hook up your keyboard, mouse, monitor, um, internet, all of that, and it all plugs into one slot here on the Ally. All of that just plugs right into here. So if you have the money, obviously that is gonna be the way to go, um, rather than getting like something like the Razer Thunderbolt dock, which is not, like I said, not my ideal recommendation, because this doesn't even have a Thunderbolt port on it. Um, and you can definitely get cheaper alternative docks if you're you know, trying to save money. So here's the SD card slot. and. Like I said, I have the um, Extreme SanDisk Extreme Plus in here just for today. I'm probably going to return this uh, SD card just because um, I'm I've I have ordered a two terabyte SSD upgrade that's coming in the mail, uh, but it's not here yet. And I'm going to take this apart and show you how you can upgrade your SSD on this uh, ROG Alley. And I'm not actually taking it apart, so it'll be fun uh, trying that out. Now we have a uh, headphone headset adapter port here as well. So you can do audio in and out right through that one port. Now I did use my AirPods uh, with the ROG Ally when I took the Ally to the gym and I had no problems using my AirPods for several hours in a row um, with the Ally. And I really enjoyed using um, this ally at the gym. Like I was just sitting there on the elliptical playing the Witcher three for like an hour and it was awesome. Now, <laughs> funny story. I actually did try to use this on the treadmill. Okay. Uh, and that was a, a lot trickier. So we have our windows home screen here. Uh, if you want to go, if you swipe up it, so it did not use my fingerprint when I enabled it. So let me see if it'll go this time. It's still not working. Now it's requiring my pin. So I have to tap in here and I'll just go ahead and type it in. All right, so now we're in to uh, Windows. And uh, overall, I think the ROG Ally software is in a decent spot. I think that the biggest issue I've had with it is there's been so many little updates and there's been multiple BIOS updates that it had to go through, um, different uh, tweaks here and there that I'm having to constantly do as I try different games. But once you have all your settings set up exactly how you want them, it's pretty easy. So uh, let's go ahead and start going through all of the different settings that I've got set up on my ROG Ally to basically 
maximize performance or maximize battery life, where all of those settings are so that you as a user understand the device uh, a bit better. And we can then move into the benchmarks. So uh, Mark says, what happens when the thumbsticks go bad like every PS5 controller I've ever owned? So if the thumbsticks ever go bad on the device, you can always swap them out. Uh, it's actually possible to take the entire ROG Ally apart, including the joysticks, pulling them out. And it's not its not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's also not super hard if you want to DIY it. Um, I did watch a teardown video where the guy took the entire ROG Ally apart in less than 10 minutes. Um, so it, I mean, at least if you know what you're doing, it certainly doesn't seem that hard. Now, um, so... The key buttons here on the interface is uh, on the left. Let me go ahead and get this zoomed in so everything is set just right and focused. All right, and let's go ahead and we'll make it lighter, brighter. There we go. Cool. All right, so we have our D-pad joystick, and then we have basically on the left here, this will get you into whatever menu uh, of whatever game you're in. So if you want to basically the equivalent of the escape key in like The Witcher 3, you'd press this button. Uh, you press this button to pull up your ROG options. So these are your quick options if you want to change your performance mode, your screen brightness going up and down. Um, you can change auto mode. This is very important. The auto mode here is going to let you easily switch into controlling your mouse or in you need to be in game or switch to gamepad mode, basically. So if you're in, you see right now it says gamepad mode, you're not gonna be able to move the mouse with your joystick, all right? I'm in gamepad mode, I cannot move the mouse with my joystick. If I click this again, it switches to desktop mode right here. Now I can move my mouse on Windows, okay? And if I wanna click on Windows, I use the right bumper button, not the trigger, but the bumper, okay? So that is how you click in Windows. And it works pretty well, I'm not gonna lie. It works pretty well. If you want to right click, you hold the trigger down and there's your right click. You tap the right, tap the right trigger and you can right click in Windows. So your left and right click is handled with the bumper and the right trigger. Um, and then this of course controls your mouse. And it's very important what mode you're in when you launch your games. If you are in the incorrect mode, uh, for example, when I loaded in uh, Call of Duty Warzone 2, if I was in desktop mode where it, this was controlling the mouse, it did not detect that I had, I had a controller attached to the system and I could not control Warzone inside of the game when I was in desktop mode. And even when I switched it to gamepad mode, it still did not detect the controller. So uh, when you go to launch your games, you need to launch the game in the correct mode. And one of the ways to do that is by setting up your game profiles. Now, I just click this button um, and that's supposed to launch Armory Crate, which it's not currently launching. Maybe I need to click it again. Try to get the exposure right here. Um, okay, there we go. So uh, you can see all the different games that I've got installed. And we're gonna try to test these out, but uh, so basically you go to whatever game profile, if you want to, if you want to manage your, uh, performance modes, all of that based on each game, then what you need to do is go to the game, you press a, and here you can select whether you want to launch in gamepad mode, keyboard, mouse mapping, desktop mode, and you can also, uh, use a when you create the profile for a new game that you've not loaded before, you can choose to copy an existing profile from another game. So the very first game that you run, you might wanna set this up and then just use that to copy uh, your profile for whatever new games that you start running on the system. Um, and this is of course, if you're gonna use the Armory Crate as your launching tool for controlling your ROG Ally. You don't have to, you could use Steam, Beam, uh, Steam Big Picture, or you could just launch everything through the Windows, Windows interface like a normal laptop as well. So you don't have to, but just know that like, if you have these game profiles set up incorrectly, the ROG Ally is going to uh, use the Armory Crate software to launch whatever profile is set up, even if you launch it in Windows, right? So if you have the profile set up wrong here in Ally, 
uh, sorry, in the armory crate, and you go to launch inside the Steam launcher, The Witcher 3, but it's set to be default in desktop mode instead of gamepad mode, it can cause some problems. So you just wanna make sure that your profiles inside of armory crate are set up correctly, unless you're planning on just removing armory crate, um, though I don't think I would recommend doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and back out of that. Uh, but if you wanted to change uh, this, right? You have a customized game profile for this game. Do you want to switch to auto mode to play this game with the profile enabled? You could hit yes, or you can hit no. Um, so, and you can also hit do not show again if you just wanted to always load with the game profile enabled. So I'm just gonna back out for a second. Um, looks like I like looks like I accidentally launched the game anyway. Um, so notice that it said I'm currently in desktop mode, which is is not good. We want to be in gamepad mode if we're launching into a game. So yeah, that's like a, an example of like, usually I think you're gonna wanna be typically in auto mode. So that way when you're in a desktop type environment, it'll switch to the cursor automatically for you. Um, usually it does, let's see. Yeah, so auto mode sometimes still doesn't work flawlessly, you know? So that's part of the dilemma with this being a, uh, a fully Windows 11 based handheld. You know, when you're talking about the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck's running like Steam OS in a Linux based thing that's completely designed for handheld interfaces. And when you're dealing with a full Windows thing where you have like overlays kind of overlapping windows, there's a lot more complex software issues that need to be solved in that type of scenario. And that's where the Ally both shines in strengths and also really has a lot of weaknesses in terms of how the software is integrated because if Armory Crate is being a little buggy or you didn't customize Armory Crate properly, it can cause games to load improperly and then you have to restart the game and reload it and all of that. And it's not uh, the ideal, um, perfectly working out of the box scenario. And of course, the other issue is that since this is a fully Windows 11 device, you're gonna to need to go through and set up and customize your game settings for each game, typically. Um, now, as the Ally software matures, there may be uh, new presets that developers utilize for Ally um, devices to just be preset and launch at certain resolutions and settings out of the box and be more of an out of the box type of experience as we go on. But right now, it's still pretty early in the software and uh, not very many developers have optimized for the ROG Ally. So uh, if you want to get into the Windows Start menu, you saw that I just swiped up right there in the middle of the screen. That gives you the Windows Start menu. Now, if you swipe over from the right side, you can get the Windows Notifications menu. If you swipe up from the bottom right, you can get all of your Windows controls, including your speakers, so you can quickly turn your volume up and down here or adjust your brightness on the display. And I gotta say this display is quite nice. I do enjoy this display. We've got an interesting thing going on with all of these, um, all of this, these icons appearing and disappearing. I think it's cause there's not enough space down here. So it's like going to the second layer of icons or something. Um, you also have your windows kind of info dash thing over here. And this has like the weather and other stuff here. Now, um, there are, I do want to mention uh, the, this is going to be an excellent device for cloud gaming. Um, so cloud game streaming with Xbox Game Pass, GeForce Now, uh, you know, the PlayStation streaming service, I think it's like PlayStation Plus or something like that. Um, and all, basically that's going to let you play ultra high resolution gaming and not consume very much battery life on here when you're at home and you're gonna get, uh, as long as you have good internet and a good connection speed to your router, it's a really good experience. I did play some Halo Infinity on here and it was awesome. I was gonna try to test that today if we have time as well. Um, checking out chat, uh, Matt says, I love my ally. Mark, I guess you buy a newer ally. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so Mark was saying, what do you do when the, the, if the thumbsticks ba uh, break? then yeah, you, you, Matt says go, you're gonna buy a new ally. And I, I would recommend replacing the sticks if they break. Um, and you should be able to do that. Um, buy the sticks individually and then swap them out because like I said, you can take this apart and uh, utilize it. So um, while we're here, I'd like to go ahead and 
just note that we are in turbo operating mode. So if you are in, um, if you're just generally in Windows, you can, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, being in high performance mode. You can be in silent mode and save battery life. Um, but typically, if you're wanting high performance uh, gaming, you're probably gonna wanna be in performance mode. Now, performance mode is supposed to use 15 watts of power. I've seen it use 15 to 20 watts of power in that range. Um, and the performance is pretty good. Like, for example, in The Witcher 3, in silent mode, I was maybe getting 25 FPS, barely playable, kinda. Performance mode, I was getting like 40. And in turbo mode, and you at 1080p with high settings, I was getting like 60 to 70 FPS in The Witcher 3, which was amazing. So um, that's what I was playing as, is turbo mode. Turbo mode is really where you wanna be, or in manual mode, which I will show you how to set up here in a moment. Now. There is real-time monitoring. This is gonna let you do um, some cool things. Let me just go ahead and see if I can get us back to the window so you can kind of see this a little better. Um, right here, you can see the real-time monitoring. It lets you check your CPU usage, GPU usage, the APU wattage usage, and then your overall system usage right there at the very bottom saying 10.1 watts. It also lets you see your battery level at 91%. You can always grab this and move this around wherever you need to put it on the screen so it's kind of out of the way. And then you can always activate it and deactivate it with a quick touch right here. Now there is FPS limiters um, that you can turn on right here in the software if you don't wanna mess with the, the game. If you wanna limit to 30 frames per second to increase battery life, you can just tap this and set it to 15, 30, 45, 60, or off. Uh, and in, of course, in games, you can also enable that, like uh, within most game settings, you can set the FPS limit if you want to be more conservative on your juice. This keyboard button is very important. I have found that many of the games, uh, when the game menu is not popping up the way you need it to, um, or you're needing to map a key that's an awkward key, and you're not hooked up to an external keyboard like we will be here, like the keyboard right here behind us, um, and you need to pop open the keyboard there's the key button here. Now there are a lot of different keyboard options that you can use on the ROG Ally. Right now I have it set up so that it's basically designed for thumb typing, which is the left and right split setup. But you can also set it to be, uh, let's see here, if I go to keyboard layout, I can go to the default keyboard. This is like larger keys, but a lot of the special keys like the escape button is not shown here. and I find I found that in a lot of the games when I'm trying to get to the certain settings or something, I couldn't get the right setting to appear or something. I needed to pop open the keyboard and press a Windows key. So in order to access that, I changed it to the traditional keyboard layout where you have the escape button and all of the little normal keys that you might need to press. Um, so this is kind of a little trick that I've been using to just navigate uh, this kind of awkward software interface where you have a full Windows 11, but you don't have a physical keyboard and you need to always be able to pop this open at a quick like tap, tap, and boom, there it is. Um, so very important to, to know that that's there. Um, there's also a record screen option, which I had to enable this in Armory Crate. Uh, I have not tested this much. Uh, you have AMD RSR, you can turn on and off right here. Um, and that's pretty much the primary things here. I mean, you have your game profiles. This should open up our Armory Crate. So um, inside of Armory Crate, you have your gamepad mode and your desktop mode. We were talking about this, you know, uh, we've been talking about this mode quite a bit. You need to know what you're in. Uh, if you're in gamepad mode, that basically means you're trying to control a game environment with your, you know, aiming, um, your camera usually with your right thumbstick, moving your legs with the left thumbstick. Um, and of course these buttons, the shoulder button and trigger button are not your mouse clicks anymore when you're in gamepad mode. They are whatever uh, those buttons are mapped to for gameplay. Um, now, if you wanna customize your buttons, you can actually customize them. And I notice, notice that the, um, the rear buttons are usually not mapped, I noticed uh, by default, but I actually map them to nine and zero, which are my benchmarking keys so that when we're playing games, I can actually um, capture benchmark data with those buttons. So, um, but yeah, you could map those to whatever else um, in-game functionality that you wanted. 
Um, and then you can, of course, in the, the game settings, map the key to like the nine key or the zero key or whatever key it is um, for the game you're playing. And you can set that up, uh, which is, it's cool. I love that this is integrated right into the software. Uh, you also have desktop mode. This is the layout for the left click, right click. Um, and if you wanted to additional key buttons, like you wanted one button to open the Windows button or the notification center or do some kind of macro or something, you can set some of that up here. Um, now, I want to show you, um, this is the home page for the Armory Crate application. So you can navigate your game library and I have installed all of these games on the local system, but about uh, a little over half of the games are on the micro SD card slot. And you'll see today the difference when you load a game that's on the SSD, it's much faster than when you're loading a game on the micro SD card slot. So um, that's something that's very important to keep in mind. Um, when you're loading like complicated AAA titles and you're running it off of the micro SD card slot, it's gonna run slower, on, have longer loading times is the, the biggest difference in my opinion. Um, all right, under the settings here, uh, we're gonna go down to operating mode and this is something that's just like the laptops essentially. Um, and you, in here you have your Windows. If you select the Windows option, that is going to match whatever profile your Windows is currently mapped to. I wouldn't use this. I would say to either use, um, typically, unless you're playing a really light game, silent mode is only really gonna be for like web browsing or like watching Netflix or something really lightweight. Um, most games are gonna really need performance mode to be able to play really, really well. Unless you're playing like a 2D side-scrolling adventure type game or you're okay with only getting 30 FPS, then silent mode, silent mode will work fine for those scenarios. But typically silent mode uses around eight to 10 watts of power and it, it does help conserve battery life. Um, and in silent mode, you're probably looking at two to two and a half hours of gameplay, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on all the other settings you tweak, like Bluetooth being enabled, Wi-Fi being enabled, uh, things that are running in the background, because this is a Windows PC. Um, and of course, uh, the gameplay demand. But basically, this is not gonna really run less than around that eight to 10 watts when you're running a game. Performance mode, like I said, uh, when you're on battery, it's like 15 watts. When you're plugged in, it jumps up to about 20 watts. Turbo mode, 25 watts, up to about 30 watts when you're plugged in. And sometimes uh, it may even boost to higher um, wattages, like 40 or 50 for periods of time, but usually not sustained. Uh, and then manual mode, we pop over here to manual mode. You can actually customize the sliders to be um, whatever wattage you're wanting. And the really cool thing to me is that you also have fan curves here. So you can set the device up to be as loud or as quiet as you want for the left and right fans. And of course, um, you can also set your power limits to be a little bit higher, up to 35 watts. Um, though typically I was seeing closer to uh, 25 to 30 watts most of the time in manual mode, maybe a burst uh, higher than that. But typically it was this 25 to 30 watt um, for the long power limits. Um, so when I'm plugged in, I typically was just running it in turbo mode because also the fans, uh, at least the way I have it set up right here, the fans uh, do get quite a bit louder and a bit more audibly noisy. In turbo mode, you usually don't hear the fans at all over any gameplay audio you're playing over the speakers. Um, so I do really, I, I have really enjoyed playing games on this, especially uh, the Witcher 3, I've probably played about five hours now directly on this device, uh, and it is an awesome gaming experience for uh, a game like The Witcher 3. So, checking out. Don Don says, turbo is 35 watts. Turbo is 25 watts when on battery, 30 watts when plugged in, but it does boost temporarily over that wattage range when you're plugged in. All right, so uh, checking Checking chat, RiceH says, hey, I'm choosing between the Legion 7i from last gen, Razor Blade 16 with a 4070, I know Razor, which should I choose? I prefer having a future-proof laptop and good screen, which should I choose? Um, if it, I'm guessing for the same money, you can get the Legion 7i with a 4080, uh, or you said Legion 7i from last year, and Blade 16 with a 4070. Uh, 
I'm guessing the Legion 7i is going to be the better buy, at least in terms of bang for your buck, Rice Age. Um, but if you want a Razer, you can also go for the Razer. The Blade 16 is good, but if you can, I would go for a 4080 if you're going to buy new, um, if possible. Tony G says, I don't know if anyone has asked this yet. I'm late. How easy is it to dock to a TV display and use a Steam Link Remote Play client? Uh, we're going to show you that here in a moment. We're, we're going to go through the docking process and how I've got it set up. Uh, Tony G says, awesome content on this channel as always. Help me pick out several laptops over the years. Thanks a bunch. Glad to have you, Tony. Um, how many laps have you? A Sager MSI and Asus ROG. Nice. Uh, Matt says, Diablo 4 is incredible on this. Uh, nice. Todoroki says, what do you think of the announced Blade 14 2023? I think the Blade 14 is... Really cool, but I wish they had a 4080 and 4090 variant option because um, I think a lot of people looking for a really high-end premium product would rather get a 4080 or 4090 because of the increased VRAM and performance. Um, Legends Never Die says, wow, doesn't seem worth it, Tony. What do you think? Okay, all right, sweet. I think we're all caught up on chat. Um, let's move into our next segment. I want to test the speakers and show you the audio quality of the speakers. We'll do our traditional audio test here at the beginning. Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and exit this. And when you're in just normal laptop-ish mode, uh, it is possible to just control this with your finger, right? So as if it's a touch PC. So we're gonna start with Peter Spacey Roar. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way up, see how long it takes to change the volume. I just, I don't love how long it takes to change the volume. I wish this was faster. Like 10 increments of volume would be much better. Uh, Windows really needs to change that. Um, or at least make this do, make it go up and down by 10 so you could just quickly change the volume rather than only two. It's like sitting here forever to go down to like 50% volume, you know? Ah, there it goes. Now, after you press it a bunch of times, it starts jumping by tens. Yeah, it's kind of just a pain. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm gonna grab my mic and we're gonna set this up a little further back, actually. All right, and we're gonna get the decibel count meter here and we're gonna focus in on that. All right. Good, good, um, beautiful. So let's go ahead and get a uh, baseline. 41.2 or just uh, right around 42 decibels is our baseline. We're gonna go ahead and do Peter Spacey Roar. So we peaked right around 82 decibels. We're definitely getting some nice bass, some decent mids and highs. It's, it is breaking up a bit. Like there's not perfect clarity on these speakers, but uh, I feel like for a mobile device, the speaker, that's, that's pretty impressive overall audio quality. Let's move into Faded Aeon Half-Life. <laughs> I I uh, like these speakers the mids and highs especially the highs tend to break apart but the overall volume is very loud um 
And there is significant left-right audio separation as well when you're playing games. So you do have spatial audio when the when the when the console, uh, the handheld is facing you directly. Uh, you can tell if someone's coming from your left or right or or whatever. It's not it's not as good as headphones, but it's pretty close. Um, this is gonna be Deuce Williams. La la la. Love you. The vocals do sound really good, I think, and that definitely helps when you're listening to uh, like in-game dialogue audio. Um, that's what you want. You want to be able to have a good vocal experience where you can hear the game characters talking. Um, and then since there's a good amount of bass, like the cinematic music when you're playing games like The Witcher 3, really it does come through um, and give you a good audio experience. Um, so I guess we could show you, let's do, what is the best way to show you? I, like I'm tempted to show you just one more audio test while we're set up like this. I could just launch The Witcher 3 real quick here and just let the intro kind of play. So you can hear um, the quality of the audio. marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do so, the, uh... The audio, I think, on this device is immersive enough to where I don't feel like I need to go for headphones. Um, for like long, good gaming sessions, I feel like the audio experience I'm getting just out of the box, sitting there on the couch is awesome and uh, fully immersive. Um, so yeah, Brilliant. Brit Allen says, uh, are you gonna test plugged in or on the battery? Uh, we are going to do a little bit of both, but primarily we're gonna be plugged in for the vast majority of tests. Um, so let me just go ahead, check. Yeah, we do have Afterburner running. Um, let's go ahead and do our Cinebench run. We're gonna do a few Cinebench runs and give an idea of our performance uh, for that. I wonder what's going on with, like our little icons keep disappearing here in Windows. See this, I'm trying to tap on the Windows button here, but I can't. There we go, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this back. And we'll zoom in here on the ally. And we'll get loaded into Cinebench. So Cinebench uh, is just gonna give us an idea of how fast this eight core 16 thread CPU is, and it should be fairly, fairly fast. I might have opened this up more than once. So uh, a couple of different uh, key gestures I also recommend learning is the three finger, you can, you can three finger swipe left and right to go between the most recent applications. As you can see, sometimes it doesn't really work very well. Um, but 
Yeah. So there I've got these two applications. I can should be able to three finger swipe between the two of them. So if you've got Internet Explorer open or whatever, you can quickly jump between. That's cool, but it's not necessarily like, you know, mind blowing or something. So, um, all right. So for our test here, I'm just going to pull up the real time monitor so we can see uh, our basic CPU stats. And let's go ahead and run. So, uh, so the important way to read this on the top up here is right now we're doing 27 watts through the APU, um, which is the CPU GPU combined. And then our overall wattage here at the bottom is our total system wattage use utilization. And I've noticed that this bottom wattage takes a little while to update. It does not immediately update. Uh, but notice right now we're getting 100% CPU utilization and we're hitting 3.6 gigahertz. Um, and I'm not sure if that's across all the cores or just one. And that's partially why I guess I want to open up HW info. Um, but that gives you an idea of the rough stats there. Um, let me see if I can unpin a couple things from the taskbar. Like, I really wish there was no Microsoft Teams here. That would be really nice. I can unpin Alluvium Zero, that's fine. Close that, close that application. Um, I suppose I could also just make it so that the Windows Start menu is smaller. Let's go ahead and open HW info. We'll do, uh, I guess I can show you the summary first real quick. So you guys can screenshot that or pause it and look at the detailed HW info stats if you feel so inclined. Can I get this to pop back? There we go. Um, there we are. So uh, right here, you can see that we're on a four nanometer with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, which is uh, eight cores, 16 threads over here on the left. We've got LPDDR5 RAM, and we've got the Radeon uh, GPU here. Um, I believe it's the 780M, if I if I'm understand correctly, as far as the integrated GPU, but it's a unified unit with between the, the, the Z1 Extreme processor, which is based on a four nanometer architecture. You can see that right here. And the max TDP is 54 watts, uh, though it doesn't sustain 54 watts because it gets too hot. Even under max fans, 54 watts is a little bit much for the cooling system, um, which is kind of a bummer because 54 watts certainly does provide additional levels of performance. Um, overall, I feel like this system really is designed for uh, higher than 720p gaming, like for real. Um, so it's very, it's very important to know that uh, I feel like the Steam Deck, when you're comparing the Steam Deck against this, in, I, I think when you're looking at the Steam Deck, you're looking really at a 720p uh, designed for gaming system. And when you're looking at the Ally, you're really looking at a 1080p gaming platform that'll be able to play games at 1080p the vast majority of the time at smooth frame rates. Not every time, but the vast majority of the time. All right, so let's go ahead and get uh, a run going here and we can take a look at our performance levels. We'll go ahead and start and we'll swap back over to our data here. Let's go ahead and open the clocks up. All right. So you can see that we are getting 3.6 gigahertz across all of the cores there. That's really great to see. You can see that we are doing uh, 80 degrees on the CPU and the CPU package power is right at 30 watts of power. And this is on battery mode right now. We are not plugged in and I'm curious if this would go up um, when we plug it in, I think it probably would go up, especially in a burst. Uh, I'm not sure how high it would go up to. I didn't test that. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, Brent Allen says, I would recommend rebooting before Cinebench. Interesting. Um, 
Hmm. C P P P C Tech says uh, he's a record holder for Cinebench at fifteen thousand and Time Spy for thirty two sixty. That's pretty insane. So we got twelve thousand nine hundred and sixty two for our first run. That is really impressive. Very very impressive. Uh, let's do ahead and do another run. Uh, let's just tap it once. There we go. Don Don says 12K went on battery. I know it's that is crazy impressive, especially considering you know for a fact that this thing could run at this level for like two hours straight. No problem, no overheating. Um, it's awesome. It's really awesome to see. And I I'm very impressed overall with this initial result. At, at basically 13,000 for a on the f just right off the cuff with no optimization um, performance level, that's pretty insane to see. Um, so, you know, this thing has more chops and juice in it for from a CPU perspective than a lot of the cheaper Windows gaming laptops that have like i5 chips or, or lower like Ryzen 5 chips. Um, this has better CPUs than, than those even in a bigger chassis. Um, so that's super impressive, 13,104. So let's go ahead and try plugging in the official Asus power brick and just seeing what we get. See if we get any in kind of any kind of increased performance here. Uh, CPC, CPPC tech says you can use the Dolby Access app to improve the audio quality. That is tr that is correct. Um, and I already did use that uh, to set it to dynamic mode, uh, which it was the best audio quality setting that I found. It may vary from usage scenario to usage scenario, though. Um, Brett Allen says, God, this beats my old 10850K, which was a, uh, I believe it's a desktop processor that he had in a big big beefy laptop and this thing's just a little handheld it's crazy how fast technology has uh, progressed so plugged in 14,127 awesome just awesome so right now you can see we are doing 95 degrees we're also doing 41 watts of power right now Okay, so we are boosting above the 30 watt limit, um, just like I mentioned before, and we are basically thermal throttling right now. I don't know how long it's gonna be able to sustain this. Our overall clocks are doing 3.99 gigahertz, 3.87 gigahertz now. Um, did our power limit come down or are we just thermal throttling? So basically right now we're thermal throttling and we're getting down to 38 watts of juice. Um, and this is where right now the turbo fans, I'll move the mic over here. You can kind of hear it. So that's right next to the fans. Um, the fans are barely audible, kind of like a quieter laptop mode right now. Um, in terms of fan noise, 13,807. If we go ahead and pop open armory crate and try entering manual mode where everything is maxed out. Go to our settings, go to operating mode. We'll pop over to manual mode. We'll hit apply. All right, let's go ahead and close armory crate. Can you hear the fans ramping up now? That is not that loud. Um, let me give you an example of the loudness real quick.
So maximum fans putting out 47 decibels of audio, which, I mean, if it's a handheld and you're holding it right next to your face, you know, you're going to hear that. Uh, but people across the room, for example, won't really hear that, um, at least not very loud or clearly. So um, gives you, I, I just want to make sure everyone has the full context for that information. Cool. All right, let's try uh, manual mode and see what we get. Because the big thing here between turbo and manual mode is turbo definitely did not run fans at maximum speed. Um, and whoa, right now we're doing 4.3 gigahertz, uh, 47 watts of power to the CPU. And our temps are climbing to 90, 91. Pretty awesome to see this level of performance in such a little freaking handheld. It's kind of unbelievable, honestly. Um, so now we're pulling down to 40 watts and doing 3.95 gigahertz. But still, it's sustaining 40 watts now in manual mode. 14,338. Um, let's let it cool down just a little bit on the, the, the temp. Uh, get down to like, I don't know, 50 or something. Right now, I'm looking at the temp right here. 59, 58. Once we get down to around 50, we'll start a next run. Um, and we'll just see kind of like... That's kind of like best case scenario for a burst of CPU utilization, not the consistent throttled performance, but still that is insane for a little handheld. I love it. I love it. So crazy cool. Like uh, my Legion 7i that I was using until a couple months ago, big beefy laptop pushing like a hundred and something watts through that CPU. It was doing 15,000 or approximately a little over 15,000. And this is so close to it. And that laptop two years ago cost $3,500. Um, and it's a high performance laptop with a crazy cooling system and all of that. And now we've got this little handheld that's basically matching performance to that high performance system from two years ago. All right, let's go ahead and start it. We were down to 50 degrees. So we'll get, we'll have this be our last Cinebench R23 run. Um, but essentially what we're looking at is between um, like 14.3K on the high end with, uh, with turbo mode or lower performance modes, you know, reaching more like 12 and a half, 13,000 uh, went on battery. So uh, LSP says, Aussie video here, the new live stream time is so early for us. I hear you, man. I appreciate you coming by anyway, stopping by the live stream. Hardcore fan LSP, I love it. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I, it's it's just my my schedule this time works a little bit better. Um, but you can always rewatch the VOD, right? You can, you can jump back and watch the VOD, and, you, and I'll still be streaming. Um, you know, right now is when I typically was starting my streams. So okay, fourteen thousand four hundred and thirty-two. I believe that's the best run we've had so far. Obviously, insane. Very awesome. And uh, if you were to use the AATU application, you might be able to undervolt and overclock this sucker a bit more for even more performance. Um, okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and run Time Spy. Um, so I think. Yeah, I think that covers just about everything. Let's before we, before we move into um, before we move into the full benchmarking segment, I want to just show you all the different settings in Armory Crate, um, how to adjust your audio settings and some of these other lighting things. So uh, we've already went through operating mode. That's how you change your performance mode. Uh, game visuals. This is where you can change your color scheme, basically your color schema. Um, let's go ahead and take off the real time monitor. Um, so you have Vivid, RTS, Scenery, Racing, Cinema, FPS. I've just been using default. Uh, you can also adjust the color temperature if you want to get rid of the blue light to be more um, like brownish or reddish. 
under the lighting scenario, this is where you can change the key, uh, the, um, the little circle lighting around each of the knobs. So let's just go ahead and show you that. So under static, we can select the color. And of course we got to turn the brightness up. Um, and now we've got our thing there coming through. Uh, so we've got blue knobs now, which look pretty cool. Uh, breathing, this will let you switch between two different colors. So we got blue and pink, purple right now. Strobing, color cycle, this will switch between a solid color, color going between a bunch of different colors. And then you have rainbow, which these, uh, these RGB lights, if you're gonna run this, I would run this on rainbow because it will blend the lighting between uh, multiple Let's try, I'm trying to get this to be a little exposed a little bit better. So you can kind of see the RGB. Like the little RGB things are so bright that they're kind of blowing out the camera unless I really underexposed the camera. Um, so for example, when I was playing in a dark room, I tried turning this down to the, low, the lowest is 33%. It just was still so bright that it was kind of visually obnoxious to me. Um, when playing The Witcher 3. It looks great when you're in daylight or bright environments. I would love them, but uh, not a big fan of these RGB lights when you're actually playing games because the RGB is just like like hitting your eyes and really it can be really distracting um, like in a dark cave environment or something in The Witcher 3. That's my scenario in a dark room. It just was not fun. So um, anyway, and then Aura, Aura Sync lets you sync to your other Aura Sync devices if you have other ROG things that are compatible with Aura Sync. So, awesome. Under these settings, your uh, your boot settings, uh, you can change whether the you can change whether the uh, awake sounds and lights come on. Um, you know, some people don't want the uh, all of this stuff to animate and make a big deal because they want it to be, I don't know, more basic. You can turn those things off. Under connection, you have your Wi-Fi connection and as well as your Bluetooth. You can manage uh, your Bluetooth connected devices so you don't have to go to manage it through Windows if you don't want to. Under audio, you have your microphone modes. You have uh, different ways you can pick up your audio. I have not tested these. I don't know how well they work, but these are kind of your standard ROG things that they do in Armory Crate. Uh, speaker modes, you do have AI noise canceling based on the non-human sounds around you. I have not really tried this much, uh, though it's been off the whole time. So I haven't really, I have not really messed with this, haven't had time. Uh, but just know that that's there. Um, over here on the right is where you can adjust this window, this window that pops up when you press this button, the command center, you can take buttons. If you don't use some of these buttons, you can take some away or you can add new functionalities right here. Um, like if you want to be able to enable, disable your refresh rate, your resolution, your aura, LED brightness. I'm actually curious about the LED brightness Oh, that's nice. I like being able to turn it off and on on the fly. That's nice. So if you're in a dark environment, you can just turn them off now. Um, so I really love the customizability of this software. Uh, it works well so far for me. It's crashed a few times, but generally it works well. Like I said, the other issue is just the overlays dealing with Windows and the controller software switching back to a mouse, back to a gamepad. Um, those are the other main issues I've had in general with the software. Okay, so um, I believe we are ready to hop into 3D Mark. And we're going to run Time Spy and see what we get. Uh, CPPC says my average time spy is 3260 overall, 2918 for graphics, 9720 for CPU. 
Um, I don't think I scored that high when I was doing my um, Time Spy initially, but I also maybe wasn't in manual mode. I'm not sure. Uh, do I have the Asus XG Mobile? I do not. Um, if I was going to use this as my main PC, I would get one. Um, and it is entirely viable, I think, to potentially use this as your entire main PC. Um, but realistically, you could only run this as your main PC if you are not really, like you're okay with not having a keyboard and mouse unless you're docked. That's the thing. Um, well, I guess, I guess you could always um, get an external wireless Bluetooth keyboard that you could take in your backpack with you. And then you get this, you set up this little stand wherever you go and you whenever you need to type something like you're in college and you set this up in front of you um, in the class and then you put your Bluetooth keyboard right in front of it. And you could probably use it as a note-taking tool or whatever or a business-taking tool. It would just look a little funky and the screen would be really small for general Windows usage, but it's possible. Okay, so here we are. We've got 46, 47 watts of power. You see that? 48 watts of power right now. Uh, 2,600 on the core clock, which is really awesome. Um, 2,300 megabytes used for VRAM. Our CPU hitting 19% utilization, 18 FPS right here in TimeSpy. That is very good overall. Uh, much better than my initial test. My initial test on this, I think I was only getting like eight or nine FPS in like silent mode or something. And then I switched it to like performance mode and tried turbo mode. And this is so much better. This is more than double the initial first time I tested this. 20 FPS now. Very impressive. And look at our wattage. We're sustaining over 40 watts right now. And we're not thermal throttling either. Forty-seven, forty-eight watts. It is just, it's cranking. You know, like like I'm, I'm seeing like like I said, I was seeing a lot of performance comparisons with the Steam Deck, and a lot of those people were comparing the performance of this against the Steam Deck when it's at fifteen watts of power, and that may be a viable test when you're doing battery uh, life handheld gaming on the go. Um, but you can do 30 watts of power to this. And then when you're plugged in, you can get over 40 watts of power uh, when you're plugged in. And it is a night and day difference between a Steam Deck and this thing. Like this thing is absolutely so much more powerful than the Steam Deck when it's plugged in especially, or when it's at least at 30 watts, um, even when on battery. So yeah, overall, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the score because I actually I have not tested it since I updated the BIOS and this BIOS update that I did clearly improved performance from the first time I initially tested TimeSpy on this. So I'm excited to see the result of this. Brit Allen says reboot to get your taskbar back. Um, so I'm pretty sure the taskbar is simply because I have too many icons across the bottom and it's like doing like the second row. That's why all, like all of them are scooted up. And then because it's touch interface instead of mouse interface right now, um, it's just acting funky. Um, so 31, 29 FPS. It's crazy levels of performance for a handheld. Let's see what we get. Two thousand eight hundred and twenty nine, eight thousand eight hundred and ten for CPU score overall. Thirty one forty nine. Um, that is crazy impressive. All right, for a handheld system, that is insane. Um. Now, it is obviously not as fast as a 
true dedicated gaming laptop with like an RTX 4050 even, a 4050 doing, you know, seven, 8,000 at least typically for the GPU score. So think of this as like a low entry level gaming laptop, essentially, that is just powerful enough to play most AAA games at 1080p, low to medium, sometimes high settings, smoothly. But um, but yeah, and this is, so we just ran this in manual mode, right? So let's do it ahead and do a silent mode test. And let's do this on battery, all right? So we're gonna do a silent mode test on battery. So this is gonna give you the um, kind of performance you can get when you're basically trying to maximize the juice from the battery to make the this little handheld last as long as possible. Um, and the simple fact is the performance is significantly reduced. So. Uh, LSP says, now a handheld has hardware that's as fast as a GTX 1650 laptop. Um, yeah, basically, right? It's, it's insane. Interesting. So right now we're still doing 30 watts of power. We should not be pulling that much wattage. Yeah, it's in, it did not stay in silent mode, okay? Um, but we are in silent mode now. And this is still gonna be um, very close at least. We, we ran in turbo mode for, for just a little bit at the beginning there, but notice that now we're in nine watts of power, all right? Seven FPS. We were doing 20 FPS when we were plugged in doing 40 watts of power. That shows you literally the, the FPS drop you're talking about when you when you rein in this chip that's the the Z1 extreme that's in this um, in the ally um, it really needs to really shine and get close to peak performance I think it needs at least 25 watts 15 is kind of the minimum to like where you're getting most of the power but like you want to get 80 90 percent of the performance the chip can provide you need 25 watts of power going through the, the system um, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna grab something to drink. Eric says, Asus needs software additions where you can park some of your cores for silent mode. Hmm. An interesting thought. That might help. I don't know. LSP says, this is still able to run stuff such as Shenron Kagyur or Calgun. Um, yeah, so I believe you're talking about like 2D emulated type of games. Uh, the silent mode should still be able to run those really light um, like enter the gungeon meat boy type of games at reasonable frame rates in silent mode. But if you want to run the Witcher three, if you're going to get decent FPS in silent mode, you have to like crank the settings way down. Um, but you got to go to like 720 P low settings with FSR two on like balanced mode or lower, which is not the way I want to play The Witcher 3. I want to play The Witcher 3 on high enough settings, the details look good, and I can see what I'm I'm killing, and the storyline looks good, I'm enjoying. Like I, I, There's a baseline level of graphics that I feel like needs to be minimally met in a AAA game to have maximum enjoyment, and Silent Mode just does not give that level of enjoyment in most AAA games. 
So that's why I think if you're going to play AAA games on this, you're really looking at performance mode, which we'll do a, a test in performance mode next so you can get a better idea on, on the performance mode performance. So this, this, just keep in mind that at the very beginning, the test was running in turbo mode for about 10 seconds before we switched to the silent mode. So not quite a perfect silent mode test, but that gives you a good idea of the level of performance. Much lower. 1333 for our graphic score. 3524. Huge difference. All right. So let's move into uh, a performance mode test. <sighs> Okay, we should be getting, now in actual games, we should be seeing 15 to 20 watts approximately for the APU in performance mode, usually 15 watts um, when not plugged in. Um, in terms of how these different performance modes affect battery life, uh, in my experience, being in silent mode, you're looking at two to two and a half hours of battery life, maybe three if, you, if you're playing a really light game, but you're, you gotta really limit the games you can play to be able to get you silent mode. If you're in performance mode, which is what we're supposed to be testing here, just to make sure that we are in performance mode, we are still in performance mode. Um, we're doing 20 watts of juice right now, right? And we're doing 15 FPS, 18 FPS now, 17, okay? So in performance mode here, we're getting the majority of potential performance from the system, uh, where silent mode, we really were not getting the majority. Like right here, we were getting like seven FPS. We're like doubling the amount of FPS by doubling our wattage. Um, so if you're looking to maximize your battery life when playing AAA games on the system, performance mode is probably the way to do it uh, and get the most battery life. And with performance mode enabled, and you have your other settings kind of like dialed in well enough, like you're not, you're like limiting your FPS to at least 60, maybe even 45 FPS. Um, you could go down to 30 FPS as well, cause it's gonna be smooth enough gameplay as long as the 1% lows are also right around 30. Um, and if you, if, you, if you tune it correctly, I think you can get a little over two hours or about two hours of gameplay out of the system in performance mode. Now in turbo mode, which is the mode I used, for example, when I was at the gym, because at the gym, I knew I was going to be there for a little over an hour utilizing the ally in, you know, I'm sitting there on the elliptical playing The Witcher 3 and I'm in turbo mode and, uh, you know, like I know that I'm not going to be there for two hours. I'm going to be there for a little over an hour and then I'm going to head home. So all I need is a little bit over an hour of juice out of the system anyway. So I just run it in turbo mode and it, and it lasted me um, about an hour and 40 minutes is what it was on track to last me. It was about one minute per 1% of the battery life um, in turbo mode. So that's the highest performance mode. So, and I wasn't at 100% brightness and uh, theoretically, I think I was limiting the FPS to 60 in turbo mode. So I, I could have pushed, I could have been pushing it to 75, 80 FPS in The Witcher 3 on high settings, 1080p, but I was not doing that. So uh, I did save some power in the mix of that. So if you're maximizing the processor, uh, slamming it the whole time, and the brightness is up, I think you're going to get like an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes on the lowest end for this system. Um, in terms of battery life, that's my current best guess or estimate in terms of, uh, I have not, I've like, I've taken this through about four or five full battery life cycles now placed through like sitting, letting it run down at different intervals. And I played with the settings constantly, um, to try to optimize each game. So I'm going to try to walk you through, um, each game that we run today at like, uh, what settings I set at, uh, to get smooth gameplay, um, and the best overall experience for each game. Um, so, for example, Apex Legends, I was able to get over 120 FPS, um, but only under certain settings. So I'm gonna walk you through those settings. At uh, other default settings, it was only getting like 60 to 70 FPS. So, uh, and that can make a big difference in an esports title going up to 120. Um, 
Okay, so there's performance mode. We got 2,406 for our graphic score, 6,154. Uh, so this is kind of the middle ground where you're getting the majority of performance from the system while conserving battery life. So performance mode is probably the way to go if you're trying to get that nice middle ground, um, like closer to two hours of battery life. Um, and obviously if you're looking to extend the battery life, I'd recommend getting an external battery pack. All right. So we're gonna be launching our games from the We're gonna be launching our games from the Armory Crate application here. Um, and I think we're ready to go ahead and get into some testing here. Let's start out in Cyberpunk 2077. And we're gonna be in gamepad mode. The keyboard keeps wanting to uh, pop up, which is pretty annoying, but... Um, Oh, and we should go ahead and plug in and all of that jazz into our external monitor setup, which let's go ahead and go over that as we get into this. All right, so it's gonna load in and we're gonna go into the, my dock. I'm gonna show you the dock I'm using and how that's set up. So, all right, so this is the Razer dock right here. It has um, a lot of different ports built into the Razer dock. On the back, we have our let me zoom out a little bit. So on the back, we have our power adapter that comes in. This has lots of juice. It does up to 100 watts of USB-C charging out through the cable to the device. The Ally only does 65 watts anyway. Now it has three USB-Cs out, and these are DisplayPort enabled. So we have this USB-C going to our monitor. We have this USB-C going to our Aerox 3 wireless gaming mouse. Uh, we have an Ethernet port and we have three USB-As. We're, we're using only one of the USB-As for our keyboard. And then on the front, we also have a micro SD card slot and a headphone port. And that audio is so loud on the Ally, I have to turn it down. Um, okay, so now that we've got this we got all of this plugged in. This cable is going to our monitor, key, uh, mouse, keyboard. All we have to do now is plug this in here. All right, and now we're set up right there on the monitor behind us. All right, so at this point, what I've got set up in our monitor settings is uh, screen mirroring, and they're both, the monitors are set up at 1080p resolution. Now this monitor is 16 by 10, um, so it's stretching to be able to fit everything on here. Um, but that's, I mean, that's okay for now. We're just mainly using this for testing purposes. Uh, but if I wanted to control this now, if I wanna control this with keyboard and mouse, this is just like a PC now. Um, so I can set this off to the side. And I can use the main monitor to, and of course this monitor could be literally whatever um, TV monitor output that you want um, to come out from those USB-C ports on the Thunderbolt dock. And like I said, you don't have to get that Razer Thunderbolt dock because it is more expensive than I would recommend. The XG Mobile is the best dock. Probably the 6850 XT is probably the best value dock for your money. But if you want the most powerful version, obviously the RTX 4090 version of that is the best, most powerful XG Mobile dock. Now, there are a lot of cheaper USB-C docks out there. And I did buy one of those here. This is a... This is an ACO dot. It costs $25. It has five USB A's, an HDMI, HDMI, and then a micro SD and a full size SD. And this thing is trash. It did not work at all. Uh, well, the USB A's worked, but the HDMI was not working. I could not get it to output to three different monitors that I tested. So 
This is no good. You're gonna have to go with a different, don't get this one. Don't get the ACO dot. This is not, this is a fail. <laughs> At least the razor dock actually worked for me the way it was supposed to, right? So um, I believe I hit continue. So we can go ahead, that's fine. We can do that and then we'll do the benchmark. Uh, Lul Scarza asked, do you recommend the ROG Ally for someone that has big hands? So I have large hands. I'm about six feet tall and this thing fits in my hands perfectly. Um, if I had even bigger hands, it'd probably still fit all right. But to me, this feels about like what an Xbox controller feels like in the hand. Um, so yeah. And if you want to, you can plug this in with an external cable and just game on the big screen using the, the mobile, the ROG mobile, um, to actually control it and everything, right? So uh, I want to go ahead and put us into, let's go ahead and do turbo mode. And we're gonna be, so we're gonna utilize turbo mode for this testing here in Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this monitor. Just gonna kind of prop this up. On the side so it's level. And let's get this camera set up. So we can capture the screen here. All right, so uh, we are on a extremely lightweight handheld device playing Cyberpunk 2077. These are the settings that I got set up um, and they look, I think, excellent. So I'll, I'll walk you through the settings, but I'm gonna go just drive around a little bit just to give you an idea of the gameplay performance. Um, and I gotta say that since the the ally has adaptive sync that does help uh maintain smoother overall uh visuals than these this external monitor that does not have adaptive sync um you get a little bit of screen tearing on this external monitor that you don't get when you're utilizing the um the allies display so yeah, so as you, as you can see, this is extremely playable, very smooth, even going through the different city areas. So our settings, we are in 1080p resolution right now. Under graphics, we are, I believe, on low, and then FX super resolutions on quality, okay? Now, you can bump this up to, say, high, and then you could lower the FX super resolution, say down to performance. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like FPS wise. All right, so we're now on high settings in Cyberpunk 2077. High settings is insane. And we're still getting playable frame rates, 40 FPS with 24 or 1% lows right now. Um, and so it just, it looks, it doesn't look as good on an external monitor. I much prefer to have quality for the FSR settings because this ends up being, everything looks a little bit smeared on the bigger display. Though on the little display, on the actual ally display, um, you don't really see the smearing so much. So I would actually be okay with running, oh, we ran into the wall there. Um, I would actually be okay with running everything on um, for like performance FSR if I'm using the handheld, but if I'm gonna be using an external display, I would tend to try to pre preserve the overall detail clarity a bit more. Um, so very interesting. And notice that we're also just, we're pulling 30 watts of power as well here. So we're not going super high end. Now, if you want to go, uh, if you want to go to higher performance, higher FPS, basically, you know, Let's just, let's just see how much performance we can get, setting everything to low, and let's say we're on ultra performance, right? So this is like, this is the most performance that you could realistically potentially pull from the system. And right now we're in the 60s to 70 FPS range. 
but the quality is way down comparatively speaking like things are not as good on ultra performance mode so i would i would i much prefer to keep fsr on quality or at least balanced at the low end because it just does it looks so much better especially when you're lowering the resolution as well um all right so doing our fps check we're doing 65 29 overall and on an external monitor i'd recommend staying at 7 uh, at 1080p for a big monitor if you're doing a handheld size display that's only seven inches you could definitely turn that sucker down uh you know and feel good about your overall performance levels how did that not kill this person oh we got ran over at the same time um anyway 70 fps right now this is not I, like i said my settings that i had at the beginning is the way i would play it i would play at 1080p and then i would probably set it to either low or medium and then i would set it to quality fsr let's go ahead and run the benchmark and see what we get for our actual benchmark performance um okay and Bannock says, is it me or is the audio low? Uh, I don't think it's low. Let me know, though, if anyone else has any problems. Uh, Shadow WW asks, does it feel heavy? The Steam Deck felt heavy in front of me laying back in bed. Um, this is, I believe, lighter weight and a little bit smaller than the Steam Deck, but it's in the same ballpark of size. So, I mean, if the Steam Deck was too, too big and bulky for you, this will probably also be too big and bulky for you. Um, so... Here we are, we are in turbo mode. We're not in manual mode. We're not blasting maximum possible performance right now. We're just doing a turbo mode test. So this is the kind of performance you can get when you're on battery life um, as well in turbo mode and or very similar levels of performance. 45 FPS right now in the middle of this test, 28 for a 1% lows, very smooth gameplay, right? It's, it's, it's gonna feel fluid, it's gonna feel good. Um, when you're playing, especially if you're doing it handheld, um, you know, if you're going to blow this up on a TV screen, that's like, you know, a 75 inch TV screen, it's not going to look as good as a gaming laptop or a console system. Um, cause the resolution and the higher details just aren't as good, but it's still going to be very playable and look pretty dang good on, 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 even when you blow it up on a bigger display. Um, so 46 FPS, 16.6 for the 1% lows there, but our 1% lows through Afterburner were much better than that. That was the, That's the min FPS is 16.6. Um, overall, extremely playable Cyberpunk 2077. I love it. Um, I, I, have, I would have no problems at all playing Cyberpunk 2077 on this. Um, all day long in terms of like it's because it's a casual game is it the ideal is it the ideal gameplay experience no um you know cyberpunk 2077 i'd say the ideal gameplay experience is going to be like ultra settings with ray tracing and qhd maybe even 4k 90 frames per second or higher that's the ideal right um, and to do that, you're going to have to use either a, a gaming PC, a gaming laptop or a gaming desktop to reach that level of performance. But for most people, they just care about the storyline and having fun and they take it really casually and they don't mind having, you know, um, medium levels of performance. It's okay. It's not, they don't need to have a, insane levels of performance um, and still have a great time. At 50 FPS, you're still having a smooth time. You're having a good time, especially if the 1% lows are above 25, 30. So um, Eric says, Dead Space Remake, please. Yes, we're going to do that one um, soon. So that's one of the games we're testing today. So don't worry. Uh, and I do want to point out that Cyberpunk 2077 was downloaded on the external micro SD card, okay? So it was not on the internal SSD, it was on the micro SD card. So that's why the Cyberpunk 2077 load times were a bit longer than typical, all right? So 
Witcher 3, this is a game that's loaded on the uh, SSD, so the load times are a little bit quicker. Um, so right now, in The Witcher 3, we are doing 85 FPS. I was testing this on the Steam Deck, so I think we had the low, we have lower resolution settings right now. Um, let's check our settings. Um, okay, so we're gonna do high settings, all right? We're gonna do FSR on quality. We go to our display. Let's do 1080p for our resolution. We're gonna do max frame rate 120. Um, and we can set it to full screen. All right. And so this is 1080p high settings, right? This is not low settings, this is high settings. So that means enhanced lighting and shadows and uh, overall like gameplay experience is, I think it's gonna be better, especially when you factor in um, Let me try to kill these guys if I can. And then I'll talk some more. Yeah, got them. Okay, so uh, 39 FPS is gonna be extremely playable, um, especially when you're dealing with a handheld. But to I would probably wanna boost this closer to 60 FPS. So I believe when I was running this, I was probably doing FSR on Probably balanced or performance mode. Let's try balanced. All right, so 45. I think that I would probably target 45 FPS um, generally with The Witcher 3. Um, and so this is pretty close. I'm curious. So yeah, right now we're in turbo mode. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that since we are using like an external cable supply that's not the Asus one, it's, I've noticed that it doesn't wanna boost uh, up to the 40 watts sometimes. I don't know, we, I mean, it was doing it in TimeSpy um, when we were plugged into the Asus power adapter before we switched. But right now, it's only doing 29 watts, right? So when we're plugged in through the Razer dock, and I think the Razer dock doesn't like give it the right wattage for boosting or something, we're on battery life right now. I just switched it to battery mode. All right, so battery mode, it's now doing 25 watts, right? See that? 25 watts instead of 30 when we were plugged in. So we dropped five watts and we're running around here. And it's obviously still very smooth, good gameplay. Um, but if we plug in our ASUS official adapter cable, all right, you'll see the performance is, can be at least significant. All right, it actually jumped to silent mode, which we obviously don't want. Notice that it's showing turbo with the 30 watt. Let's set it to manual watt mode. All right, look at that. We're doing 45 watts now that we've got the Asus power adapter plugged in. So if you're looking to maximize your performance on the Ally, you're gonna need to use uh, I, whatever, whatever power adapter or power supply that's going to actually supply the full juice. Because look at this, we're doing 50 FPS now. Um, so that's a pretty significant bump um, over what we were getting at 30 FPS, right? So, and also you'll notice that our temperatures are also very spicy at 93 degrees. So right around 40 watts is kind of what this thing can sustain in the long haul. Um, and this thing is very smooth, great to play. Like it, it feels really, really smooth. I cannot get the like, I'm not getting the uh, FPS meter to reset. There it goes. Okay, so now we're actually reset. 
So 45 average FPS, 31 for our 1% lows, which is really good here in The Witcher 3. Um, okay, and so that's with the Asus power adapter plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the Thunderbolt dock. All right, and you'll see our performance change a lot as we go back to the external monitor. Interesting. It's actually maintaining the 43 watts right now through the Thunderbolt port, so that's good. Um, are we still in manual mode? No, it switched us to turbo mode. It's showing that we're in turbo mode, but it's still giving us the 43 watts. Even though we're on the Thunderbolt dock, well, now it's going down to 30. Okay, so sometimes I guess this thing takes a little while to update. If we go to manual right now, it's saying it's 15 watts. Let's see what we get in actuality on manual mode when we're plugged in. And this is partially where the software is a bit finicky still. Um, and I think that we could probably, uh, Asus still needs to tweak and improve things a bit. So, I'm just gonna turn off the back RGB lights to get us uh, a little bit smoother uh, looking visuals here on the external monitor. So 29 FPS, like this is the kind of performance you're gonna get. Um, this is a little bit less than what you're gonna get when you're fully plugged in and it's gonna be closer to what you get when you are on battery. Let's just switch it to, uh, I'll show you performance mode. So this is performance mode now. It's 20 watts. Interesting, the lighting is changing a lot. But right now at 20 watts of power to the, the system, we're doing 38, 39 FPS. So when we're doing 40 watts, we're doing closer to 50 FPS. When we're doing um, 20 watts, we're doing 39 FPS. So it's still playable at 1080p. And of course, if you're wanting to play the game on higher FPS, you can go to low settings, of course. And you know, The Witcher 3 does not look bad on low settings, right? It looks pretty dang good on low settings. And right now, even though we're only doing 20 watts, we're still getting 50 FPS in The Witcher 3. Like, this game is still gorgeous and we're getting good detail smooth fluid gameplay let's try bumping us up to uh, turbo mode all right so turbo mode it's pushing 50 watts through the cpu now resetting it now we're getting 60 fps here at 1080p fsr on balanced mode 56 on average 55 43 for a one percent low I love it. It's it's uh, it's a great gameplay experience. That um, you know, this is so much better than what the Steam Deck can do. Like the Steam Deck would just it would not be able to handle this level of uh, graphics and performance, especially at 1080p high settings. It would just it just it would's gonna get a lot more chuggy, you know. So okay. So let's try our let's try to go to our benchmark area. So we have so we can have a consistent um, place where we benchmark. Uh, Super Mike says, "Was it on max high settings, Cyberpunk?" Um, no. So in Cyberpunk, we were we did. Um, either low settings or high settings. Um, and then FSR on quality 1080p. Uh, you'd have to just rewatch the VOD and look at the, look at watch me change all the settings if you wanna know exactly the settings that we, we had set for each area. Okay, so um, let's just double check what we're on right now. Right now we're at 1080p resolution. I believe we're on low graphic settings. FSR is set to balanced, which is, you know, if you're in doing handheld mode, you could probably set this down to performance or even ultra performance. 
Probably performance is probably the lowest you'd want to go. Because uh, it does get a little bit fuzzy. But look at us doing 71 FPS here in The Witcher, 1080p. If we if we do um, you know an external monitor, then you know I would probably say you probably want to do quality or maybe balanced, you know, because it's going to be sharper image, um, especially at 1080p. And the, and the gameplay is still going to be good. Look at us, we're still doing 58 FPS right now. Fifty, and notice that there has not been very much stuttering or one percent low stutters. A lot of, a lot of PCs have a lot of stuttering in The Witcher Three, and we're really not seeing much stuttering, which is awesome to see. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start uh, this run. So again, 1080p. We're doing 30 watts of power through the system. We're on, I believe, we're on low settings right now. with FSR on quality right now. And um, yeah, very playable, 55 FPS right now, 38 for a 1% lows. It's a great 1080p gaming experience, at least in The Witcher 3. Um, and once we get over here, I'll also reset us uh, to high settings so you can kind of see what the FPS looks like when you're on high, or maybe even ultra. I'll just go ahead and go through each setting. So we've got 5840 for our, our test there. Let's go to uh, graphics. We'll, we'll try ultra settings. FSR, we'll put to, um, uh, we'll leave it on. We'll leave it on quality just so you can see how this affects everything. All right, so, so this is ultra settings, 1080p. Give it a second to kind of load, finish loading in. The gameplay is definitely not as smooth now, especially on the external monitor because it does not have adaptive sync. The gameplay looks better on the handheld itself because it does have adaptive sync. So 38 FPS, 29 for our 1% lows. This is still very playable and looks very good even on 1080p ultra settings, okay? Um, totally usable, honestly, I would consider maybe playing it at that setting, especially if you got it plugged in, because if you have it plugged in with the ASUS power adapter, you can push it up to like, like I said, 40 something watts. It's gonna jump up to a little bit higher FPS. If we go to our graphics settings, you know, you could also lower FSR to be, make it higher FPS. Let's go to high settings. Let's let that load in. All right, and now on high settings, we're doing 49 FPS. This feels smoother to me. This is the settings that I've been playing The Witcher 3 on um, with the handheld, because uh, I think it looks basically just as good. 1080p quality FSR on high settings, and it is a great gaming experience where you can fight well, you can respond to enemies that are come at you. Um, and depending on the area, some of the areas with these settings, I was getting 75 FPS, for example, in the caverns, but like this area has a lot of NPCs everywhere and uh, a bit more complicated of an environment. So doing these, these settings are a little bit um, better. I think going to 1080p high is probably the, the right balance for the different areas uh, that, that you go to in The Witcher 3. Um, okay, so let's we can try Dead Space Remake next. This takes a little while to load. We are on the micro SD card for Dead Space Remake, so and there's a lot of shaders to load and everything, so it takes a little while to load into it. Um, oh, video asks, did you crank up the RAM with MSI Afterburner? I have not overclocked the GPU at all. Um, that is still a potential possibility, overclocking both the GPU and the CPU. Um, and maybe that would be worth a separate video. What resolution was that? That was 1080p. 1080p FSR on quality and high settings at the end. And we were getting like over 45 FPS um, on average. Okay, so... We are in Dead Space Remake. We're at 1080p, 120 hertz for the refresh rate. 
All right, so FX super resolution. We have it set to ultra performance with low graphics quality right now. I'm not sure what this is gonna get if we up this FSR mode to like performance mode or balanced. Uh, let's try quality and see how it goes. All right, so this is quality. For some reason, we're only getting 15 watts of power. Oh, right. So remember the game profiles, right? The game profiles that you set up in Armory Crate just mess this up. Right, even though we're plugged in, there's no reason to reduce performance. We really at least want to be in turbo mode at, uh, as a baseline, right? Um, so now that we're in turbo mode, we're getting 40 f uh, 40 watts of power now to the to the GPU, and our FPS is in the playable range. All right, it was not in the playable range when we were in performance mode. You have to be in turbo mode in order for this game to really be playable at 1080p. All right, so, um, and obviously 30 FPS for this game is gonna be a bit not quite perfect in my opinion, um, especially in certain areas where maybe the, the FPS drops a little lower. So, and we're already on the lowest settings. So the only way to increase FPS is to either lower our resolution or um, lower our FSR. Let's try just performance mode. Let's see what we get in just performance mode here. You know, the game still looks pretty dang good. Um, and now we're getting, it's bouncing around. We're at least in the 35 FPS range. We are getting some 1% low stutters that are bringing our, you know, it's bringing it down to eight for our 1% lows there. But we also are changing a lot of settings. Notice that we are thermal throttling at 95 degrees Celsius. Dead space, again, bringing the Ryzen CPU to its knees, thermally speaking. Um, we are at 30 watts of power now. It was doing 40. Now we've dropped down to 30. Um, our temperatures are coming back down as well. And our FPS did drop from 39 to like 33, 34 right now. So it also depends on what area you're looking at, obviously, because you know we look around, it changes a lot, our FPS does. So this is obviously going to be, definitely going to be playable. Let's go ahead and do our benchmarking run walking down the hallway. 1080p, uh, well, we're on performance mode for FSR. The game looks good on my display right now. Like, I, I could play this game at 1080p on a larger TV and not be like hating the quality. Like the image quality still looks pretty good. Um, and uh, the, as long as the 1% lows stay above 24, I, ideally, I'd like it to be a little higher than right now what they're at. Um, the game is still gonna feel good to play. I think this is a scenario where you may need to drop it. If you wanna have really smooth gameplay, you might need to drop this down to 720p. Um, so in this game, we could try going down to 720p resolution. All right, and for our, for our, our FSR, we're gonna do quality. Resume. All right, and, and at this point, since we're doing quality FSR, it's not much of a difference visually or, I, don't know, I think visually it actually looks better at 1080p with FSR um, than it does going down to 720p and doing quality for FSR. But if we're just, let's just say for the sake of argument, we're just trying to see what kind of FPS we can get when we lower the settings all the way down to maximum, what are the, what is the theoretical high end of the FPS range? So 55 right now, if you're like optimizing for maximum FPS on the console, um, if you're like, you're like, oh, I really want just a smooth gaming experience. I don't care if it looks a little bit blurry or 
the image quality goes down a little bit. Um, you just want to have your ultimate um, smoothness for gameplay. Then this is the settings you probably would want to set. And we're getting in the, you know, in the 50, 60 range. Um, 45. It's definitely staying above 45 typically. So, um, so there's your dead space remake test. I'll go ahead and do uh, the lowest settings. We'll go ahead and walk this one more time. It's interesting that when you look this direction, the FPS goes down so much more compared to looking the other way. Like we were getting 60 something looking the other direction, but. Hey, see ya, Brit. Thanks for stopping by the stream, man. Um, all right. So, yeah, I mean, the image quality for me now is probably not something that I would say is like good enough to be fully enjoyable. Um, so, like, I would rather do 1080p with lowering the FSR down, is probably what I would do. So the way I would optimize this game, I would do 1080p. And then I would choose uh, ultra performance or maybe performance probably. All right, we gotta give it a chance for the game to load in all of the changes to the settings. Yeah, I would probably, honestly, I would probably set it to um, performance. I think ultra performance is probably a little bit too fuzzy for me. But, like, this is certainly in the playable range of, like, acceptable visual quality on a basic level for enjoyment level. Um, and it's, it's smooth enough to play. All right. So... Let's go ahead and move into Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Old video says, basically this is a nice mini PC. I mean, yeah, basically. I mean, if you use, if you use a dock, um, you know, if you use a dock with a keyboard mouse plugin um, with an external monitor, you can play the vast majority of games at 1080p, low, maybe up to high settings, maybe ultra settings, depending on how old the game is. But typically, it's going to be the newer games are going to be on the low low side of settings with FSR set to quality, and it's going to play really well. That's basically my initial impression. Um, but let's keep testing, right? There's some games here I have not ran yet. I have not ran through the paces and tested. So I'm very curious to see what our FPS looks like. Um, for some reason, we are getting the start bar menu popping up. Let's see if I can just press A. There it goes. All right, so so uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a game that I have installed on the micro SD card of the Ally. So just know that it is not going to load as fast because of that. All right. Um, and Jedi Survivor, I think, was 128 gigs of space. Huge game. The biggest game out of all the games that we've tested. Um, so it's probably going to have the worst loading times, um, all things considered. But that was actually not too bad. I'm actually kind of impressed that it wasn't that bad there. Like, I feel like the first time I loaded it, it took like five to ten minutes to load in. But this, I think after it loads in the first time... It's it's got I guess I don't know probably all the shaders optimized or something, um, so it doesn't take as long the next time you load it. All 
Okay, so let's take a look at our settings. Um, right now, visually, so, so Star Wars Jedi Survivor is probably the hardest to run game that I've tested so far. Um, so visually right now we're at 1080p resolution. Everything is set to low with FXR set to ultra performance. Okay. So very, uh, very, very low resolution render resolution because it's set to ultra performance. Um, let's see how we do and look at the, look at the visual qualities, you know, FSR 2 on ultra performance is very low resolution. All right. And you can definitely see the images, especially if you pause the stream and look at it. It's, it's very, um, you lose a lot of detail around the character here, especially during fast movement. When they're, when they're standing still, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, and then the other thing that I want to point out is that this is an external monitor. Okay. If we're going to use the actual display here, everything is so much smaller. All right. And it doesn't seem as noticeable. The little glitchiness when you're holding it on the handheld, uh, I could probably play with FSR and ultra performance, uh, in a, in a, in a squeeze and not really be that disturbed by, by it. Um, but when on, when it's on an external monitor, everything's blown up. You really notice those artifacts way more. Um, so if we go to uh, change this from ultra performance, let's see, can we change this? I don't know why it's being so hard. Oh, that's why. You gotta use the A and D keys, I think, to change this. There we go. All right, so now we're on performance. So this is gonna increase our resolution quite a bit. Um, and we're going to be able to see hopefully more detail, but it's also going to struggle to run as smoothly. All right, but notice that our character detail around the uh, the back here and his like it look actually looks like good detail now on the character itself. Um, and we're still doing 35, thir uh, 22 FPS, so it's going to be. It's going to be, I think, in the playable range still. Don't kill me, please. I got to I got to try to remember the uh Okay, control is how you use the dodge. This guy is not easy. And I, I killed him. All right, yeah, let's go. Um, Yeah. Okay. So, um, in summary, I would say that this game is still very playable, but it's definitely the harder to run in the harder to run category for the uh, Asus Ally. Um, and if you can run this with the higher 40 watt um, power adapter going to the Ally, just with the straight Asus power adapter going in, it's going to be uh, like five FPS higher probably in terms of performance. And that 1% low is going to be a little higher, making the gameplay feel quite a bit smoother as well. So, um, so yeah, if you can, I would recommend doing that. I could try showing you that. Let's try it. All right, so we're going to aim down here at this screen here. And we're going to plug in the Asus power adapter. I love that I can just switch this on the fly. So now we're going from 25 up to the 40. All right, and uh, 
All right, so now looking at our the gameplay on this, like it feels good because we have adaptive sync. Like if you've played 30 FPS on a on a screen without adaptive sync, it does not feel very good because all the screen tearing and everything. Um, but with this, it's still the gameplay actually still feels pretty good um, to where if you know like the switch is only 30 FPS. And a big part of that is because of how smooth everything is and how it's consistent FPS just lends itself to um, a nice smooth gaming experience where you don't have very many stutters or 1% lows. And as long as the 1% lows are staying above around 24 FPS, it's going to be a smooth gaming experience all around. And right now that's just basically right in line with where we're getting just a hair under um, 21, just here under 24 FPS for our 1% lows, 40 for our, our main average. And this is with performance mode. You could get a little higher FPS if you wanted to. Um, so, so yeah, there's Jedi Survivor. Um, let's switch this back. To the main screen and we'll go ahead and switch to our next game. We go into Dying Light 2. When plugged into a monitor, does this bypass the battery? So um, what this does is when you're plugged into a monitor using an external dock, if you have a powered dock, like, like I could plug into this monitor just using the onboard power from the Ally, it's not going to be, it's not going to charge the Ally in that scenario though, right? So that's not really what I'm looking for. Um, you know, when I'm in a dock scenario, I want a powered dock. So basically when you're using a powered dock like the Razer Thunderbolt dock, that's gonna be providing power to the ally, charging the battery, as well as um, boosting the wattage of the CPU GPU by like five to 10, and sometimes more than that uh, if, if, it, uh, if it needs it or wants it. Okay, so it looks like we switched it's in turbo mode right now, which that's fine. And I also want to point out that we are in, um, we are in, uh, what's it called? Right now, we're, we're, we're like the main issue that we're that I'm getting distracted with here is that the, the, there's a little window. It's not showing us the full resolution, so I'm trying to change it here. We want to go to 1080p. And we also want to go to full screen. There we go. All right, nice. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do 1080p, low quality. FSR is gonna be on performance mode. Let's see what we get with those settings. And let's go ahead and benchmark. Um, Ovidio Andre says, so the battery gets used anyway? Um, well, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that the battery gets charged, but I'm not sure if it's going through all the juices going directly through the battery all the time. It may directly bypass depending on how the motherboard, um, wiring is all set up. I'm not sure. Um, cause it could go into the socket and then go separately to the battery and have another, you know, kind of wise off into the, the system and runs it straight from wall power. Or it might just all route through the battery and out to the, um, you know, out to the, 
out to the rest of the system. So that's a very specific, like more technical detail that I'm not sure of. Okay, so 1080p FSR on performance mode with low settings, 51 FPS right now. Very nice overall. Of course, our 1% lows are gonna be messed up between the loading screens. But this is clearly like a good gaming experience um, in terms of overall average FPS at 44. Uh, we can go ahead and, well, I'll show you a little bit more gameplay examples when we hook it up to the widescreen monitor. This is one of the games we're gonna use on the widescreen monitor to test. So yeah, and notice that we're also, we're doing 30 watts of power for this test. Uh, I think it did try going a little higher at the very beginning, it was doing 40 for a little bit, but it didn't sustain that. It only really sustains 30, um, at least for right now. Uh, I, I don't know if we had the Asus adapter, it would actually go higher than that more consistently, but um, the main, the, pr predominantly I've been seeing 30 FPS uh, typically most of the time, or sorry, 30 wattage, 30 watts, typically most of the time. Um, 52 FPS right now here at 1080p. And the thing is, even if we were to lower our resolution down to 720p, um, even though 1080p is like a massive increase to overall resolution, um, total number of pixels being rendered, uh, you would not have double the FPS going down to 720p because this game is gonna be um, a bit CPU bound. So we averaged 50 FPS here. Again, at 1080p low settings, we could try doing, um, we'll try going into a game here. Let's try going in and we can mess with the settings a little bit inside of the game world, a little bit easier than the benchmark screen because the benchmark screen takes a long time to get through all of it. I'm gonna turn on game audio, just say 40%. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so there's our flashlight. All right, so. Um, right now we're getting 70 FPS in this scene. Which is kind of interesting that our FPS is so much higher. A bit of a stutter there. This guy's gonna find us. I'm resetting the benchmark number. We'll just try to get into a bit of a fight here. As you can see, we're getting really good FPS on these settings. And the game is very playable. Our 1% low is at 45, which is just really, really good. I don't think this is the most complicated environment you're gonna find in Dying Light 2, but still. Can we get through this door? I don't think so. Where are we supposed to go now?
Guess we're supposed to go up here. I don't know how to climb up there. But there you go. There's some Dying Light 2 gameplay at um, 1080p, low settings, FSR set to uh, performance mode. I think it's very impressive. Let's check out Elden Ring. Actually, we'll save Elden Ring for later. Let's go to Last of Us. Last of Us being one of the... Um, Last of Us being one of the more uh, demanding new games as well, because it's rather poorly optimized. Um, I did go through and let shaders pre-render. So um, this does have the shaders pre-rendered for this test. Uh, a video says the RG Alley supports bypass charging. So when you play plugged into the wall, the battery will be completely bypassed to protect its lifespan. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. That's good to know. I appreciate the info. Um, but it, it will charge the battery up to whatever level you're telling it to charge up to. I believe you can restrict it down to 80% um, if you want to, to increase the longevity of the lithium ion battery. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do Last of Us. Well, let's go and check our settings. All right, so right now we're in borderless window, 1080p resolution. FSR is set to balanced. All right, um, when, I, when I switch this to balanced, it gave me warnings saying it didn't have the VRAM required. And if you look at this warning up here, it's basically saying that we're trying to use more VRAM than what the system has. Um, but we have shared RAM here anyway, so I don't understand why it's saying that um, it should be able to handle the VRAM limitations. So everything is set to low settings right now here in Last of Us. Let's go ahead and see. Interesting. I did let the shaders build, but I guess... Uh, it needs to do to rebuild them or something. I don't know. It's interesting. It's it's saying it needs to rebuild them. I would think that it would have saved the shaders, but I, yeah, maybe because it crashed, it didn't save the um, the shaders, or maybe it has to reload part of them every time. So uh, Last of Us, if you don't know, is an epic single player storyline that is just really, um, really uh, high levels of storytelling, like high quality storytelling with great voice acting, great writing. Um, it covers a story about a dad and uh, his journey through grief as he loses his daughter in the zombie apocalypse and then he finds another um girl that he can watch out for like it's his replacement daughter almost but there's a lot of like complex like emotions and journey that the the characters go through as they like traverse this brutal zombie apocalyptic world where humans are oftentimes just as brutal if not more brutal than the zombies themselves so um I love the storytelling in Last of Us. Uh, I've played the main story like three or four hours of the gameplay of the main story. And uh, I really want to finish the whole game. But right now I'm playing The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is the game I'm playing at the moment um, because that game is also freaking amazing. Um, I've been really loving The Witcher 3 uh, lately. But I need to... This is, this is on my to-do list to actually come back and beat Last of Us all the way through so the first time i ran last of us on the rog ally i actually had the uh the game crash on me after playing it for about five minutes i'm not sure why it crashed but i'm just giving you full disclosure on what happened with it 
So here we are, we're on 1080p, low settings, FSR on, uh, what was it? Balanced or performance mode, I think. Um, let's just double check. I'm pretty sure it's, was it balanced mode? Uh, uh, display. FSR on balanced mode. And I believe we're at 100%. Yeah, render scale is set to 100%, but FSR is set to balance. So we are upscaling from 1136 by 640. And, uh, and yeah, so right now in Last of Us, during the intro sequence, so far we're doing 50 FPS, 40 FPS for our 1% low at 1080p. And low settings look pretty good. Like, like if you were comparing this side by side with a high end gaming PC visually, you might be able to see a difference, in maybe in the texture quality, um, and certain other special effects. But this looks crisp. This looks really good. Um, right now, fifty FPS. 41 for our 1% low is incredibly excellent. I want to um, see if I can go ahead and load a... So here's six hours into the game and a more complicated area of the game as well. So this is my, this is, this is my save on my further through the playthrough. So we'll see where we are later in the story. This will be a little bit... Um, Another area of the game for you to visually see how the, this game performs. So, CPPC Tech says scored 15,948 in Cinebench R23 with more tuning. Let's go. That's insane, man. That is a really good score. Um, are you using uh, AATU to tune it, to like undervolt overclock it, adjust the curve, basically? I'm guessing that's what you're using. You could also use process lasso to uh, isolate the process and use that to boost, set it to real time rendering so nothing can interrupt it. Might give you a little bit more, um, a little bit of an FPS or Cinebench score gain. Um, yeah, so my, I, I wanna talk a little bit about my impressions of the ROG Ally in terms of reliability right now. Um, that's one of my biggest, I guess, problems with it, just because I think the drivers are a bit immature and some of the software is a little bit immature, like the Armory Crate application and um, the display drivers maybe. Like, I've just experienced a number of crashes and it can be a little bit more disruptive than your typical gaming laptop because because I'm on a micro SD card it takes it longer to load into stuff, right? So you've seen how long it takes to load into Last of Us right now. We're on a micro SD card for Last of Us install. This thing is taking a long time to load. Um, you can see that right now we're not even halfway loaded in to this level right now, and at least according to the, the status bar. Um, and we're just sitting here for, we've already been sitting here for a couple minutes. So if Last of Us crashes, it might be five to 10 minutes before you're actually back in the game, playing the game, you know, so. Okay, so here we are, Last of Us, 1080p low settings, FSR on balanced mode, and the game looks good. We have good 1% lows above 24. We're getting 40 FPS right now. This is, Awesome to see. You know, I kind of want to get into a fight if I can with someone else. That would be good. So we can see kind of the FPS when we're fighting someone. Um, I'm not sure where to go to get into a fight though right now. Because I'm just hopping back into an old save I had going. But 46 FPS so far, running around in these hallways. Uh, we really want to try to get to a little bit more air, open area. 
Um, because that'll be a little bit more realistic in terms of our FPS. I think there's an open area back this way. Oh, right here. This is so we're following some NPCs through a city right here. I'm just gonna open up on these guys. Oh, okay, we gotta switch to our other weapon. Oh man. This combat in this game is just so visceral, it's crazy. So we can upgrade our stick if we wanted. But that's probably not a good upgrade. Yeah, we want to stick with the, the metal crowbar. Okay, so that gives you an idea. 44 FPS, 26 for a 1% low, 1080p low settings in Last of Us. Very playable. Um, not Again, not your like ideal gaming settings or whatever. It's certainly not going to replace a full-fledged gaming PC if you're, try if you're after like the best settings and the best... Um, the best visual experience, but if you're after just a good visual experience, good enough, this checks that box in my opinion in Last of Us. So that's really good. Um, we're gonna do, let's go ahead and do um, Apex Legends and Warzone. So Warzone of course being an esports title, Tends to be a bit more CPU bottlenecked, um, but this is also not a very powerful GPU. So we probably, I don't know if we're going to be GPU or CPU bound in this game because of, you know, when you're dealing with hardware that's this weak. Pretty interesting. Um, Eric says, can having games on SD card lower in-game performance? That's a great question. Um, generally speaking, no. But if the game is constantly loading in-game assets with, uh, you know, from the from the the card and the card can't keep up loading those assets, then when you move from area to area within the game, the game engine has to pull those assets up, and if they're not there, you might get stutters and delays, um, like drops in one percent lows uh, as the new assets are coming into the game, um, are getting loaded in, basically. And that may be true whether you're using an SSD. If the SSD can't keep up either, that may happen, or just a regular HDD. But um, obviously, the nice thing about the micro SD card slot, the micro SD card that I have, is that for consistently long loading speeds, it does throttle down. But for short bursts, it's actually really fast at 200 megabits per second or 200 megabytes per second. So um, when you're dealing with short bursts, it's not a problem. When you're dealing with, uh, when you're dealing with um, the longer initial load times, it does I think get throttled. But after a short break, it doesn't it doesn't stay throttled. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to. Uh, we want to set it to gamepad mode. For Warzone. And see if we can get Warzone to let us load in. So they had to do an update, which requires the game to restart. Let's go into our settings here. All right, we'll go through our graphics settings in Warzone. So we're doing 120 hertz, 1080p resolution. For quality, we're, um, we are set to minimum, all right, with FSR on quality, okay? And uh, everything else is going to be set to low or very low. We're going to apply those settings. All right, and we're going to do Battle Royale's solos. It's looking for a match. So uh, right here, right now, we are loaded in 
48 FPS right now uh, inside of Warzone. Like this is the game engine running here in the background. Um, so that's actually pretty interesting because I think that matches pretty tightly to what we actually got uh, in the gameplay when I first initially tested it. So we'll have to see what we actually get here. Uh, I think it found, no, it didn't, it's just still looking for a match. Um, CPPC Tech with the $2 super chat. Thanks, man, he says, and I thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate the support. It does mean so much to me as a content creator. Um, and while we're waiting here, I just want to also mention that, uh, you know, best, if you, if you really want to support me as well, or if you want to support me, um, one of the better ways to do it without costing you anything is just using the links in the description down below in a browser where cookies can be tracked. So just using, you know, regular old Chrome with no ad blocker, click the link to actually buy whatever, uh, if you decide to buy the Ally, that will help support me financially as well with no out-of-pocket cost to you. Um, so th anyway, thank you so much. Um, CPC Tech with another $2 Super Chat says, 16125 I finally broke 16 k on Cinebench. Cool. Um, did you try Process Lasso? Or wh what were the steps that you, uh, you took to be able to bust that 16 k mark? That's very impressive. I used your link when buying my MSI GP66 laptop. Okay, cool, man. No, I appreciate I appreciate the support. Um, yeah, I, I do. But, you know, if you get a deal somewhere else, you, you know, or it's not available, you can't use the link, don't feel bad. I understand. Um, you know, it's just if it's convenient, use the link is all I ask. Uh, so thank you very much for anyone that does. Uh, Lasso helped me edge over plus de-bloating windows plus upping the power limit. Interesting. And did you use the AATU for undervolting or overclocking at all? Or is this all just power limit, debloating windows, and process lasso? Okay, so you do, so it is undervolted to also reach that high of a score. Interesting. Well, I'll have to try to do like an undervolting, overclocking round with the ally and see how much performance we can eke out when we overclock it and undervolt it. Just because, you know, I think a lot, I think this is going to be a really popular device. A lot of people, like for me, I like the Steam Deck as a fundamental idea. I think it's really cool. But when you're talking about like true gaming where you feel like you're not like losing out on the visual experience, like 720p Witcher on low settings does not look as good as 1080p on high settings. Um, it really is a massive difference in terms of we're having some big load in stutters right now on Warzone. We're being shot by someone. He was up above me. That's interesting. Um, I don't, I'm guessing that the stutters right there in Warzone are probably related to um, loading in the map. Like we're just spawning into a new area, loading in the map, and it's probably the, the reason why. Did you let all the textures install for the game? I bet it's not. Yeah, it was still optimizing everything in the menu before we loaded into this map. So I'm guessing you're gonna get a little bit better performance if you let everything optimize before you load in. So right there during the plane scene, we were getting about 60 FPS. Right now, flying overhead, we're getting around 45. Uh, my mouse cannot control the aim. Right now, aiming input is locked to controller, which is really annoying. Um, so I'm gonna have to use, I'm gonna have to use the uh, ally to actually control this right now. I can't use keyboard and mouse. Uh, let's see here, I need to, I need to jump. Let's go ahead and jump. I'm not sure. Yeah, we need to go over here. All right, so I'm gonna reset my FPS so you can kind of see what we're getting as we're dropping and flying down over here. Forty-five FPS, thirty-one for a one percent low. That's obviously gonna be, you know, that's obviously gonna be playable. Oh! <laughs> I um, did not deploy the parachute. 
parachute in time. Oh my goodness. Uh, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Warzone glitched out on me and didn't even load in. That's hilarious. Okay, so if I just hit play again, let's just load into back into the match again. Um, so interesting. Visual bugginess. And this is kind of a bit what I'm saying about the uh, drivers in terms of Warzone and like... The, con the fact that I can't use keyboard and mouse and have a controller plugged in at the same time, that feels weird to me. Um, but that's probably more on the developers of Warzone. Like, they just... They haven't optimized yet for the ROG Ally, I guess. You know? Like, I feel like uh, you should be able to actively switch between the... Uh, between the... The ROG Ally and the uh, controller setup and a keyboard and mouse on the fly if both are plugged in. Right? Um, and the fact that you can't do that is just, it's weird. Uh, okay. You have to tinker with it if you want to use other input textures. It's not buggy if you let the textures fully load. Well, I, I did, uh, I did not have problems running Warzone last time. I actually played a couple matches of Warzone already and it was running okay. Um, that was the first time it actually bugged out like that. But I really just want to get down, landed, and do our benchmark run, running down the bridge at least. Um, so. You have zero issues on mine and Warzone at all. I can get keyboard and mouse working as well as controller. I'm sure I could get the keyboard and mouse working. It's just uh, the way everything is set up initially here is uh, is not... I, don't know. I think it has to do with the armory crate and whether you've set it to be like when you when you when you select this if you're in gamepad mode or in desktop mode if you're in desktop mode it'll be fine you'll be able to use keyboard and mouse just fine if you're in gamepad mode though when you load into warzone it's going to try to use the joystick and everything to control you know the game okay so it looks like it found a match So we're about to load in. Um, you won't get the best experience unless you load all the textures. I agree in general. I think that's a good principle. Um, but for the sake of this live stream, we don't have time to let all the textures load in because it might take a little bit too long. Um, so it's one of those scenarios where uh, you're probably going to get slightly better performance or slightly more optimal performance if you let everything load, um, pre-render, you know, in the menu for 10, 15 minutes before you get into the actual match. I'm pretty sure it takes that long at least if you want everything to be as perfectly optimized as, you know, as it possibly can be. Um, so right now I am going to use the ally in my hands. Okay, things are definitely loading a lot better now. And things are looking really good. Like on my screen, things look so, like they actually look really smooth. Uh, I had a bit of a stutter there, unfortunately. Someone shot us. Oh, we were getting some shots in at least. I'm not very good at controller um, anymore. I used to play controller all the time in high school. But I switched to mouse and keyboard and I lost all of my controller skills. So. Chao, chao. 
I, I, you know, I think uh, when we were in the menu, I was not seeing any. Open the tack map. All right, I know where. No, I know where we're going. All right. So we're gonna be sure to pull the parachute this time. LOL. I thought it was supposed to auto pull, but I think as I cut it and then reopened it and then cut it and reopened it, it just didn't stay pulled or like the auto pull doesn't work the second time or something. I think that was what happened. Okay, so here we are, 50 FPS right now. 1080p FSR on quality in war zone. 50 FPS. Our 1% low at 16 is obviously not perfect. Um, it did bounce up to 27 for a little bit, down to 5. And in general, it's feeling pretty smooth, except certain like occasional just like stutters. And obviously, you don't want stutters if you're trying to play a competitive FPS. Though it's it doesn't seem to be stuttering except for certain odd moments you know so i guess i grabbed the heartbeat sensor what i don't know how to use these controls because i'm okay so how do i use this how do I use this drone I just got? Oh snap, someone just came after me. Okay, well, he grenaded me and then came around the corner on me. This guy knows what he's doing. Oh my God. All right, so uh, 49 FPS. We'll do our Gulag fight and then we'll move on to the next game. Hopefully it actually loads in properly this time. Okay, yeah, the Gulag is working properly now. I'm gonna reset our FPS count for this area of the map and see how we're doing for our 1% lows. There's our buddy in there about to fight somebody. CPPC Tech, uh, thanks. He says, just let the textures optimize and see the difference. I'm pretty sure the textures are more optimized now that the game's been loaded for so long. But things are like running smooth in general, 30, 40, 40 FPS for a 1% lows now, 29. Like, this feels smooth. It only does the texture optimization in the menu. Interesting. Okay, we got our opponent. Dang. Well, we got some shots in on him. It's all good. GG, sir. Okay, so 57-36 overall inside a war zone. Um, again, without everything being super optimized. That's usually how I end up testing war zone. A good overall experience, but not like ideal for a competitive shooter, you know? So... Let's try, let's try an experience now in CSGO. I believe we're going to see a lot better overall experience in a game like CSGO. So let's check it out. Is CSGO loading? There it goes. It's taking a little while. Uh, CPPC Tech, you're talking about you running Warzone. Like, uh, did you see note? Did you notice more FPS in Warzone? 
You're saying after it's optimized. I'm just curious, do you know what it was? What FPS you were getting? So the FPS does down here, 120, but uh, we can probably pull up our real-time monitoring for this game. Um, that should give us... We probably have it set to 120 maximum. Interesting. Well, all right, let's go ahead and do our FPS benchmark. And then we'll try going into a quick match in Dust 2. Notice that we're maxing our FPS at 119. I've not seen it go over 120. So I'm guessing the benchmark may not be a good example of actual performance, but it would let us go through a smoke um, and give you something that you can visually compare. Um, right now we're at 1080p native resolution, but everything is set to low. Okay, well now the FPS is going above 120. Maybe it's just capped to 120 inside of the menus. Wow, 300 FPS right now. <laughs> okay, let's see what we get inside here. 150, 170... 200 FPS right now in CSGO with a mobile handheld. What? Um, absolutely insane. 207. 194. Obviously, this is without as much stuff, kind of easier to run environment here. Uh, as we get to more stuff on the screen, it's going to go down right now. 118, 120. 130, we're gonna start get some animation, some explosions and some smoke on the screen. Inside the smoke now, getting down to 30 FPS, but still 30 FPS inside the smoke is not bad. You could still at least see what's going on. It's not like a, sh it's not like a slideshow. Um, like I remember playing CSGO and I would go through the smoke and it would be like five to 10 FPS. Uh, back on the older PCs. And the fact that this can still maintain 30 FPS, even when going through the smoke, is awesome. That is actually pretty, that's pretty great. You know, a game, a full-fledged gaming laptop, um, the highest-end gaming laptops may be doing 60 to 100 FPS going through smoke. Um, so it's not as good as one of the, like, the high-end gaming laptops, but still, that is pretty dang good. And I'm pretty impressed with the CSGO performance overall, at least initially here. Very nice, let's see what we get for our average. It's probably gonna be at least 150, I would think. Let's see. 156.7, so 157 for our uh, CSGO FPS at 1080p resolution. Um, I think we could probably even bump this up to QHD resolution and still have a great gaming experience, uh, which is kind of insane. <laughs> so we'll pop it into Dust2, uh, see if we can get into a Dust2 server, just so we can shoot some people and see what it's like in an actual match. Because it's totally different, it can be quite a bit different, the FPS you get you know, on the benchmark map versus actual um, Matches with a bunch of players, so. CPP Tech saying you're getting 95 to 100 FPS in Warzone 2. I don't know if that's accurate. I don't think that's true. Maybe if we went down to 720p resolution. Maybe then, but... Otherwise, I wouldn't think so. So right now, we're doing 110 FPS. And this thing looks buttery smooth. No stuttering at all right now. Oh, 
Snap. Okay, so my team lost. Uh, I don't have enough money for an op, so let's just do a... Try an AUG. We have so many people here. Let's try running back this way. So, doing about 120 FPS right now. We got a kill! Uh, I gotta say, this is playing so smooth and very responsive. I definitely feel like you could play competitive esports on this um, and not feel like you're missing out horribly. Like, obviously, CSGO is an excellent 240 hertz FPS type of a game. But yeah, like right there, like I feel like I have perfect aim control, it's responsive. Um, great gaming experience, and you could do that on the native display, but I'd probably play keyboard and mouse for this kind of game. I wouldn't want to play, um, I would not want to play this game with a, uh, controller, personally, because it is not very controller friendly, relatively speaking. Uh, let's go into Apex Legends. Uh, CPPC Tech says, I play Modern War 2 daily on mine, and its latency is insanely good when tuned and set right. Just as good as a decent gaming laptop. Um, yeah, Modern Warfare 2, I'm not sure exactly how optimized that is relative to Warzone, because Warzone has a huge map. Um, and where I think War Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 2 has a lot of smaller maps, so they're probably not quite as intensive to run. So... I'll show you uh, 1080p and we'll also do 720p. I suppose we could do QHD too, just to give you an idea of the performance levels. Uh, but I think for this game, I would probably run it 1080p or 720p, depending on the FPS levels I'm looking for in Apex. Um, so let's just pop into the firing range right away here. Right here in the menu, doing 140 FPS. Let's see what we get inside the frying range and then we'll hop into a match as well, as long as it doesn't take too long to load into one. Okay, so checking out our settings. Right now we're at 720p. Everything is set to low, but we do have um, TSAA enabled. So things do look a little bit sharper than they would. So everything is loading in, all the textures and stuff are loading in right now. It's definitely stuttering a lot right now. Like this makes me want to come in here and lower our textures down to, to two gigs or something. I don't know. Oh, that's actually showing, I think that's showing latency. That's showing internet connection issues. I don't think that's related to our, um, like I think our FPS is actually good. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Well, let's slide on down here to the range. This could be a driver issue right here, or it could be an internet connection issue, because it is flashing a lot of different things up here. I was playing Apex on this yesterday, and it was not stuttering at all, so I don't know what's going on. Um, like, there's moments where everything is super smooth here, and then it's like, just big stutters in between.
Right now we are on turbo. Super annoying stutters, you know? Not sure what's causing it, but let's try shooting some stuff. Wow. If I if I go down here and text texture streaming budget to nothing, is that gonna help us out? Oh yeah, that helped us out. So it was the textures. It was the textures, absolutely, that was messing everything up. So Texture set to lowest settings. Now we're good to go. Everything is smooth. Well, it was smooth. Now it's not smooth. Interesting. Yeah, things are not smooth right now. It's better than it was, but this is, this is interesting. Yeah, this is, these are connection legs as well, so. Is something being downloaded in the background or something? Let me see it. Nothing's being downloaded. Nothing else is open as far as I can tell. I don't know why we are getting those legs. I alt tabbed out, I alt tabbed back in and now it's perfect. Okay, this is just like how it was yesterday when I was playing the game. That was really weird. Alt tabbing out, alt tabbing back in. And now look at us. 117 FPS, 89 FPS for our 1% lows. So we're almost maxing. We're almost maxing the refresh rate of the internal display at 120. This is a great gaming experience. Let's try going to 1080p so you can see what that's like. All right, so 80 FPS, 65. This is good. This is not as good though, right? Like this is smooth. I could play like this and not feel like it's awful at 1080p, but I definitely would prefer the 120 FPS because that, that makes a big difference. That's a 50% increase to smoothness. So let's go back down to 720p. And let's hop into an actual match. All right, so it looks like there's a team death match available. I'm just gonna set the texture streaming to be at least low. So that way the textures look way better than like no textures because no textures look just terrible in this game. It looks just like a, a blurred mess basically. So it found us a match. It indicated it was gonna load, and then it did not load.
Persistence transfer timeout. Interesting. So yeah, it like disconnected us from the match. Uh, I wonder if that was with the, the little legs we were dealing with. We'll give it one more attempt here to try to make it happen. We'll wait about 30 seconds here. If it doesn't get us into a match here in 30 seconds, we'll, we'll just skip actually playing a match. But just know that the FPS I was getting in the range was the same FPS I was getting in the game. About 120 for 720p and around 80, 75 to 90 in that range for 1080p. Yeah, it looks like the Apex servers are messing up right now. I don't want to sit here too long. We've got a lot of other tests we want to do still. So we're just going to cancel the Apex test for more testing at least. We at least got a good basic test in. I really want to do Hogwarts and God of War and then we're going to switch to the widescreen ultra wide monitor and do some high resolution game testing. Um, and I'm just going to show you at least three games that I'm pretty sure we can get good, good frame rates going on the ultra wide monitor, which to me is insane for our little handheld. So I really want to show you that. John Q says, what is the Wi-Fi card used on the Ally, Media Deck or Intel? I'm not sure off the top of my head. It says Realtek for... For that. Interesting. I'm not sure where the best place to look it up is in here what, because it's not under the adapter here. Is it saying Realtek USB? I know if it's I know it's a Wi-Fi 6E card. Windows XE. You want me to do Device Manager? It might be in Device Manager, I suppose. Um. Yeah, probably easier to find in here. It's a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E. There you go. So. Okay, here we go. Hogwarts Legacy, one of the hardest to run games of the year. We're not gonna cap our frame rate uncapped fsr on quality 1080p everything is set to low with no ray tracing enabled let's see what we get here we go is this temporary team deathmatch um team deathmatch is a uh, yeah it's a it's one of the rotating mode things that they do now Okay, so uh, every time you log into Hogsmeade, it's always stuttering on every computer that I've ever been in. So pretty much except for like one or two. Um, so let's just run through the system real quick here. Try to load everything in. I give the ally a chance to load everything in. All right. So we'll run backwards now. So again, 1080p FSR set to quality right now in Hogwarts. And we're getting right now 43, 44 FPS. Let's go ahead and run down the, the hallway here. 
20 FPS for a 1% low is really good. Um, we've had no major stutters since we've started, since we've ran back, forward and back once. 42 FPS on average. 20 for our 1% lows. Phenomenal. Okay, that is phenomenal overall. Uh, smoothness and gameplay performance. Um, just... Rebellion. Straight up. Like this is a good enough gameplay experience. You're gonna have the, you're gonna have stutters in Hogwarts no matter what, just because of the way they designed the game. Um, when you're loading in areas with new textures and stuff, but this is great. Like this is certainly very playable. Um, our one percent low fourteen is is it's not going to be that stuttery normally. Um, cause once you get everything loaded in, in an area, it'll, the 1% low will come up a lot. So like if we're not moving through the environments, right, we're just in a normal like room. Let's go ahead and see what we get in this little inter, inter interaction. Matilda student. I thought I might be seeing you soon. 55 FPS right now. 24 for a 1% low. I'm afraid I haven't yet, sir. And the low settings in Hogwarts look really good. Like, it, is magic it, it still looks like a very modern AAA game, even on low settings. Um, the only issue is sometimes on super low settings, some of the times the textures don't look as good, but these textures are looking pretty good right now. Certainly would be better on higher, um, higher texture settings if we could run it. 31 for our 1% low. Very good in this scenario. 55 for our 1% low. So there's Hogwarts for you. Definitely another playable game. Um, I really want to load into um, God of War. And then we're going to move to our widescreen gaming test. So God of War being one of the, I think, most desirable single player games to play that's come out in the last few years for PC. It's a truly high end, excellent gaming experience. Uh, 1080p, 720p resolution. Um, no VSync, no triple buffering. FSR is set to quality. All right. Graphics mode is set to low right now. We'll try low, and we could also try a higher setting level as well, just to see. I'm not sure what we would get, but it's pretty quick testing God of War, at least in the little test run that I run. Um, so we can do both. We'll do a, we'll try ultra settings and low settings and see what kind of FPS difference it is. Uh, but right now, God of War, 1080p, low settings. Let's do a run. Here we go, 40 FPS, 32 for our 1% low. The game is looking good. It's not like incredibly crisp, but it's definitely crisp enough. You could play on a TV. You could. Uh, it would look good overall in terms of an enjoyable gameplay experience. And that's from like a big screen gaming experience. It's gonna look good. If you play this on the handheld, right? Everything is smaller on this little screen. The details just look awesome on the little screen. Like, like when you blow it up on a big screen, you notice the little differences with FSR enabled and the little artifacts. On the little screen, it looks perfect. It looks really, really good. Um, and uh, so on the big screen here, let's try, uh, let's try changing our settings. Let's just see what happens when we go to Ultra. I don't think it's going to... I don't think it's gonna play that well on Ultra, but I haven't tried it. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll play all right. 
Yeah, ultra settings appear to be a bit too much for the system to handle. Getting around 16 FPS on average. Um, let's try let's try original. So this is, I guess, what, how the game was originally designed to be ran. Let's see how original handles. Oh, wow. Okay, so original is actually appears to be pretty playable at 30. But for God of War, given the fact that it's an action title, and I'm sure some areas of the game are gonna run a little bit a little bit choppier than this area of the map. I would probably want to run it on low settings. Um, but this is this appears to be pretty dang playable as well on original settings. So one setting level up, basically medium settings. Um, and the gameplay does it does look a little bit crisper right now um, on the big screen. But on the, on a little a smaller screen like on the Ally itself, it's not going to be a big problem. And our one percent lows are really good. That's the key. Right now, 27 FPS for a 1% low means that uh, if you play this on the handheld, especially with adaptive sync, it's going to look really good. The gameplay itself is going to look really good. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones we want to do real quick. Uh, I mean, we've got Elden Ring. I want to test Elden Ring, but we're going to do that on the big widescreen, and we're going to see how that runs on the big widescreen. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and test some games on the big screen. This is gonna be really interesting, I think, for people to check out. So we're gonna unplug this monitor. We're gonna take the ROG Ally in the hand here. We're gonna walk it around behind. This is gonna be a bit of a camera adaptation, so hang in there with me here, please. I have to move everything real quick over here. Okay, so. All right, so. It was, this has loaded for me last time, no issue, but I might need to plug it in or give the device a restart or something. Let's unplug. And let's try plugging in again. Let me move some stuff around here real quick. There we go. Looks like we got loaded into the widescreen monitor. Um, I do want to show you. A few different things. So this display output is actually capable. This display output is actually capable of running this at, at least in theory, at the 5120 by 1440p resolution. So this is the native display resolution of this monitor, 5120 by 1440p, which is absolutely insane. And I'm not, I don't, I don't think that this little guy is gonna be able to run almost anything at 5120 by 1440p, maybe CSGO. Um, but at 3840 by 1440p, um, there are widescreen monitors that have this exact resolution that are basically identical to the one I have here with me. I used to own one um, that was 3840 by 1080p. So this is a very realistic test for the monitors that have this widescreen resolution. So let's go ahead and just do a couple of tests with this resolution. So uh, I want to point out that that uh, I am actually able to connect, and I don't think it's set to this right now, I can tell it's a lower refresh rate, but we can change this to 240 Hertz. 3840 by 1080p 240 is our display resolution right now. 
So it is the full, right now, going through the Razer dock, we're able to put out um, 240 hertz refresh rates right now to this external monitor with the Ally through the dock. Um, let's start with one of the easier to run games, Counter-Strike. And we're gonna try running it at, I don't, well, can Counter-Strike run at ultra wide resolutions? Actually, I don't think Counter-Strike can run it. Like, I think they restrict the aspect ratio. Let's see what aspect ratio we can run Counter-Strike at. Um, it's, a fair, it's a quicker one to load anyway. Uh, notice that we still have our menus that can pop up and we can control that in here. Um, I'm inclined to switch it to manual mode, but let's see, let's see if CSGO can play this at this ultra wide resolution. Now I'm going to need to pull up the, um, the chat. on my phone so I can respond to people here. Okay, so it is actually utilizing the full wide resolution here. 3840 by 1080p. Wow. Okay, awesome. Um, let's try to get into a match. Right now it's saying we have 110 FPS. I don't know that it'll actually maintain 110 FPS with the ally. Let's find out when we actually get into a match. Let me see here. Can you guys see the FPS counter there? Let me see if I can move this camera to the other side. Hopefully this way you can see uh, the FPS count right here. Or if not, the FPS count right here. So right now we're getting 100 FPS in ultra wide. What? It is insane. Isn't that insane? Like, <laughs> I mean, if you were to tell me that this would be able to play ultra wide gaming at all, at any, any game at this resolution, over 100 FPS, I would say you're crazy. And yet, look at it, it's doing 120, 90. It's like consistently not stuttering, it's smooth for our overall... Um, the overall gameplay experience is excellent right now. Let me, uh, I'll zoom in here on the numbers. I'll just play one round and then we'll switch to our next game. I've got, uh, I wanna do Elden Ring. So right now, 90, 95 FPS. I don't know where the last counter terrorists are. Here's one. Got one. Found another one.
Got another one. Triple kill. Um, how awesome is that? I got the MVP too that round. Okay. So there's CSGO. Uh, we're averaging in the 90 to 110 range, I think, most of the time here. I'd have to actually watch it back to see for sure. But that is really impressive to me that it can play it at all. Um, all right, so let's try Dying Light 2. All right, so now we should be able to have um, MSI Afterburner so you guys can see the, the FPS stats in the middle of the display here. Dying Light 2 is uh, loading. Again, it's it's on a micro SD, so it takes a bit longer to load. Right, I'm gonna turn these lights off just so it doesn't cause as much glare. Um, I will go ahead and zoom in with this camera, so hopefully you can see me a little bit better as I play. All right. Wow, the camera is really showing. I've got some uh, backlight bleed up here. Okay, so we're in low quality. Right now we're at 1080p. Let's try if we can. Yeah, 3840 by 1080p. We're gonna need, let's try performance. All right, so low quality, 3840 by 1080. Let's see, um, let's see how it plays in the same environment that we were running 1080p um, earlier. I mean, chat. I'm just, I'm really curious. What do you think of this, this ally being able to do this resolution at all? Like. Like I, like if you try to do this same thing with the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck would probably be like just chugging um, in terms of FPS, even probably in CSGO. But let's see what we get here. Um, so we're actually getting 41 FPS. Forty-two, like this is definitely playable. Like we are getting some stutters, but I think once everything is loaded in, I think it'll be smooth. Thirty-five FPS is obviously very playable. I'm not saying that people should buy the Ally and then buy this really expensive monitor that costs more than the Ally to be able to play it, but you could get, you could buy a, um, like a widescreen, wide aspect ratio 1080p monitor that's cheaper and you could still play games.
It's entirely possible, especially if you tweak it. And this is a newer game, too. So, yeah. Can you play? We actually managed to kill all the zombies right there. While playing on ultra widescreen. That's insane. Okay, so let's check out The Witcher 3. See how The Witcher 3 does. So The Witcher 3, of course, being um, one of the... It's an older game, but it is also a game that's really known for having really good graphics. So right now it's set to 1080p resolution. It's like spread all out. Let's up the resolution. 3840 by 1080. All right, and... We're gonna be on low settings. FSR, we'll set we'll set FSR down to I don't know. Let's just try performance. And let's try loading in. Let me um let me move. Oh, I can't. The resolution's wigging out a little bit. Again, this is the driver issues that I was talking about. Uh, let's do 2000. Okay, so right now, ultra widescreen gaming, Witcher 3 on low settings, right? Low settings, FSR on performance, 3840 by 1080p. And we are, we are right now averaging 38 FPS. Like this is far from the ideal gaming experience at this widescreen resolution. But to me, just the fact that you could play this at all is insane. And it's definitely playable. We're above 24 FPS for our 1% lows at 36 FPS. I mean, this is pretty insane to me. Um, let me zoom in over here on the... You can see the FPS numbers. They are 36, 27... On an ultra widescreen gaming experience at 25 watts. Let's try switching it to uh, turbo. Maybe that'll bump us up to a higher wattage. Okay, so now we're at higher wattage. Oh, sorry guys. The mic is bouncing around a little bit. Now we're doing we we're doing 40 FPS there. Let's go ahead and call in the horsey. Go ahead and ride the horse around a little bit. 
this is you know going to be a bit more demanding moving through the the game world very quickly and it's still smooth 35 fps 26 for a one percent low like this makes me wonder how many other AAA games could you actually run and have a great experience on in this ultra widescreen gaming format Okay, uh, let's see here. Do we want to try one more? I'm not sure if any of these other ones would run. We could try Cyberpunk. But I'm pretty sure Cyberpunk 2077 is not going to like this hyper resolution. It's probably going to be unplayable. Uh, let's find out, though. Maybe we can still get over 30 FPS. I would not be surprised. Oh, nice. Okay, so now you can see the FPS over in the top right corner. That should be better. Uh, Ultra Kill or Doom games would be good. That's true. Those would probably run really efficiently on here on this kind of uh, high resolution. All right, 3840 by 1080. Do a low, we'll try performance. See how we do. Oh, nice. Okay, now the now the performance thing is in the middle. I just, I just can't believe a handheld is powering ultra wide gaming at all. You know, like what? Whoa, are you serious? It's doing 45 FPS. You've got to be kidding me right now. For 42, our 1% low is 21. This is definitely in the playable category. <laughs> On an ultra widescreen monitor, I mean, obviously we're we're upscaling quite a lot here with FSR, um, but if you're from a distance or if you had a little bit smaller monitor, like this is a really big monitor, really blowing up the pixels, so you really see the pixel pixelation. I kind of want to take this guy's fancy fancy smarts car. That that's the car I want. Oh, someone just rammed us. All right, can I shoot a gun? All right, I see it, I see it. Let's see if we can take this car now. Oh, well, we set her on fire. Sorry about that. Oh, that was cool. So 39 FPS on average in this ultra widescreen monitor experience. Again, I'm just blown away that this can do this at all. And this is the kind of thing where I'm saying like the ally, the ally just stretches its legs so much further than a steam deck, a steam deck. I bet would get less than 20 FPS in this scenario. Completely unplayable, even remotely. And this is this is actually very playable. It's very playable, especially since the 1% lows are actually pretty good. Um, I mean, they're obviously not, it's obviously not the most ideal gaming experience ever, but it's good. It's very good. All right, let's do Elden Ring. Elden Ring will be our last benchmark. And then we'll do a summary of everything that we have figured out from this live stream so far
So Elden Ring typically is a game that's a little bit easier to run um, than some others. But the thing is, Elden Ring has not implemented FSR. So you have to run it at whatever native resolution. Um, I don't know if there's any way to get FSR to run. But going into our system information... You can see we're at 13, 3840 by 1080. Ray tracing is off. Quality settings are on low. Advanced settings, everything is set to low. All right, so again, we're gonna have to just run it at native, native, no upscale here, um, 3840. By 1080. Let's see how we do. I am I'm not anticipating it's going to be amazing, but oh wait, is it not even going to run it at white widescreen? Does Elden Ring not let it go widescreen? I don't know. All right, so this appears to just be 1080. Right now we're at 40 FPS, 25 for our one percent low in Elden Ring, on low settings, at 1080. It's not, I don't know why it's not uh, giving us the full render resolution. Let's try 2560 by 1080. Whoa, okay. That is a special resolution. So right now it is running, I believe it's just at 1080 basically. I don't know if we're gonna be able to, maybe, maybe Elden Ring's not compatible with widescreen. Um, let's try just setting it straight to 1080. Oh, now it's all stretched and skewed, but, and our FPS is the same as what it was. All right. So let's just set it back to the wide resolution. So everything's not stretched and let's try uh, high settings. All right, let's just see what happens when we go high settings. All right, so Elden Ring on high settings, 1080p. All right, so this is the same settings you would be running this game at if you were to play um, on the native resolution. It's playable. 31 FPS, 30 FPS. We're getting some 1% low stutters that are on the low side for sure. But most of the, it seems pretty smooth to me. About 20 FPS for our 1% lows. Uh, let's get out of his attack range real quick. And we'll, we'll try, well, I don't know if we can do 720p resolution here. But, but yeah, just know that it's like above 30 FPS, around 20 for our 1% lows. And that's on high settings. High settings definitely looks a lot better in Elden Ring. Um, and I think we'd be able to probably be pushing a lot higher FPS. Is this guy going to attack me? He's going to attack me. Ah. I got a hit in. Got two hits in. Three, four, five hits in, six hits in. Oh man, we're about to get wiped now. Oh, we are murdering this guy. This might be the lowest health I've ever got this guy down to. Oh, and I just said that and I... Oh, now I died. Okay. Um, yeah. So, awesome. So that gives you an idea, like, around 40 FPS on low settings, 30 FPS on high settings at 1080p. So Elden Ring, very playable. Let's, uh, let's bring it back and wrap this up, all right? Let's bring it back and wrap it up. So...
Awesome. Let's turn these lights back on. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So, the ROG Ally. This little beast is definitely capable of doing some ultra widescreen 3840 by 1080p gaming. Above 30 FPS, it's not like the premium gaming experience of a high-end gaming laptop or whatever, but if you have a moderately higher resolution like QHD uh, resolution, because this is more than QHD resolution at 3840 by 1080, right? Um, so if you have a QHD external monitor, know that in many of the games you are gonna get playable frame rates at QHD, or preferably really, I think most games are gonna play better and you're gonna be able to turn the settings up a little bit higher if you go to medium FPS or, or, or medium settings in general with FSR on quality, maybe on lower, like certain games, like newer games, like uh, Jedi Survivor, obviously that's a very demanding game and we're barely eking out um, playable FPS on the lowest settings at 1080p. So um, AAA titles like Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, they're a little bit older, older. You can get 60 FPS gaming at 1080p if you're willing to play with FSR, lower the right settings at the right ways. Uh, overall, the battery life on this, as I mentioned earlier, about two hours in silent mode, a little over two hours maybe in silent mode, but you're not gonna be able to really do AAA gaming on that. On performance mode, you're gonna get uh, reduced FPS performance, only about 75% of the potential performance of the machine. And you're gonna be able to get, um, you know, like about two hours, a little, little under two hours, like an hour and 40 to two hours of performance. In turbo mode, I was getting a little bit less than an hour and 40 minutes, um, down to maybe an hour and 20 minutes, depending on your settings. Uh, so battery life on this can be pretty limited, all right? So that's probably the biggest downside to the Ally if you're after something that is gonna be like, you know you're gonna commute uh, for three, four hours, you're gonna need three or four hours of gameplay um, on the handheld device, then you need to bring a battery pack or you need to consider getting a Steam Deck instead, even though it has lower resolution and a, and a low, lower power um, graphics card in the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck battery is much more optimized for performance on those like long battery runs. That said, even the Steam Deck, when you're running maximum settings, it's only gonna be a little bit longer than this. You know, a little over two hours if you're trying to do the, the 15 watts higher performance gaming um, in AAA games at the lower resolution. The biggest thing about the Ally is that higher resolutions at 1080p, QHD, or this ultra wide gaming form factor are possible with proper um, gameplay settings and, and everything uh, to where the game is playable on these higher resolutions, which can be a much more awesome experience than a little display, right? Now, the other thing about the Ally is that you can get the XG Mobile uh, attachment to it. And I talked about this in detail at the beginning, went through examples, showed you where you can buy it um, on Best Buy's site. There are other places you can buy it. You can buy used ones as well on eBay. The XG Mobile will turn this thing into a monster mid-range to high-end gaming PC that will be able to play on ultra settings or high settings uh, for this like widescreen monitor or QHD gaming. And you're gonna be able to just breeze right through most of the games on the ultra and high end settings. So if you're after like a more premium gaming experience when you're at home docked, then you can get this plus, plus the XG mobile and have a great all around experience. Now, Cinebench R23, we were getting uh, around 12 to 13,000 on the lower performance mode. Higher performance mode, we were getting 14.4 thousand in Cinebench R23 without any additional tweaks and optimizations which is insane for a little mobile handheld. That's more than a lot of gaming laptops can get in CPU only benchmarks, which it's, so it's phenomenal. I really was very impressed with the CPU performance in here. If you're after just a powerful general PC that you can use um, around town, you can just dock it and you can do your email, you can watch Netflix on it, you can do whatever you want when you unplug it and you can do whatever you want when you plug it into an external monitor like this, 
and just use it like a PC, this will work as a whole PC for your family or whatever. Like it's it's a whole PC in your hand. Um, and it's full Windows 11. And that is uh, that is a huge plus and it is a huge con. Because it's full Windows 11, that means you have drivers and software compatibility issues that happen frequently. And because you have Windows 11 here, you're also dealing with uh, the battery optimization and battery life issues, like where the Steam Deck being on um, its own Linux Steam OS, that is designed for maximum battery optimization, quick loading in and out of games, and it's just purely designed for gaming. This can replace your whole PC. A Steam Deck theoretically can, but not without a lot of extra work and a lot of extra optimization and, and, and much more than even this, all right? So ergonomically, I enjoyed gaming on this. The speakers on this do provide spatial audio, left-right audio separation. I love it. I, I've really enjoyed my time playing The Witcher 3 on here. That's the main game I played over the last few days, uh, over six hours of gameplay directly on here. And it feels like I'm getting the premium gameplay experience the way the game is meant to be played. When I loaded The Witcher 3 up on the Steam Deck, it's just lower resolution and not as high of FPS and just doesn't feel like I'm getting the premium gaming experience of the AAA title the way the developer meant for it to be played. But I feel like I'm getting that with this. And it's not like, if, if you run the Ally and the Steam Deck at the same resolution, 720p resolution, and you do benchmarks, the Ally is not gonna be that much faster, especially if you restrict the wattage on the Ally to be a lot lower. Because a lot of these games are CPU bound. But when you play at higher resolutions like we just did, the Ally, I believe, would have more than double the FPS performance of the Steam Deck in those types of docked scenarios or just straight trying to hit 1080p FPS um, benchmarks or gameplay performance on higher settings, right? The Steam Deck, you try to run high settings on The Witcher 3 or, or whatever, even at the lower resolution, sometimes it just chugs. And it's, it's far less likely that whatever game you want to play in the future is gonna chug on the Ally than the Steam Deck. So if you're after a gameplay experience that feels the way the developers meant for the game to be played, most of the time, you're gonna get that experience way more often on the Ally than on the Steam Deck. But you still get that experience on the Steam Deck often enough. And if you are home and you do have good internet, you can do PC streaming through cloud streaming services like Xbox Game Pass, GeForce Now, and you can use external TVs, even do 4K gaming on either of these devices with ultra settings and everything through those cloud streaming services. So there are there are options on both to be able to push the FPS and push the resolution to higher levels um, for those ultra levels of gaming performance if you wanna go the cloud streaming route as well. So I just wanted to point that out, um, make sure I included that in here. I did do some cloud gaming experiences with the yoga book live stream that I did uh, earlier in the week or like at the end of last week. I would encourage you to check that out if you're curious about the cloud streaming because I don't have time to cover that in today's um, video, but I did do some cloud streaming on this with Halo Infinity and it felt excellent. Like it felt very low latency and very high levels of graphics. And when you do cloud gaming, in addition, the uh, the battery usage on the device itself is very low. So your battery life, if you're gaming around the house unplugged, is gonna be very smooth and very high graphical uh, levels at the same time that you're, um, you're not killing the battery very quickly. So you can get two and a half to three hours probably of cloud gaming around the house without charging. So that's also very, very good. Um, yeah, so. If chat doesn't have any questions, I think that's my summary of the ROG Ally. Should you buy this? If you're after a handheld gaming experience and it's between this and the Steam Deck, I would buy this every single time because you're not locked into the Steam OS in the same way. Um, this has much higher performance for higher levels of graphical settings. You get a much more powerful CPU, a next generation CPU. The only reason you'd be by the Steam Deck over this is if you really love indie games that are easy to run and you want longer battery life on those games. Because 
This thing just can't go to as low of wattage as the Steam Deck for those long-term battery runs. But other than that, just get an external battery pack that you can take with you if you wanna extend the battery life of this or the Steam Deck really. Um, Cause either way, you're probably gonna want more than two hours of gameplay if you're gonna be going for a long trip anyway. So, um, LSP says, I have questions. I suppose those handhelds will really shine when playing more discrete types of games such as aforementioned Sanren Kagura. Um, yeah, the indie games are gonna run really, really well on these. Uh, I know that people are running emulators to run Switch games and older PlayStation 3 games, PlayStation 2 games, and they work great um, for playing those games, like running at higher FPS than what the Switch can run and at higher graphical settings than what the Switch can run doing, you know, all kinds of different uh, Nintendo games. I'm not gonna give any, any specific names because apparently Nintendo has been doing copyright strikes or bans on people's videos or something, but just know that emulators are an option on this device. Um, and I believe that the application that people are using is called MUDEC is um, the application. So if you wanna Google that, I'm sure you can find um, links to uh, emulating. I have not done any emulating yet on mine, but I do own a Switch and I wouldn't mind doing some emulation because I would love to play some of those games um, that are out there. And it would be a really much better experience playing at 60 or 120 FPS than playing 30 FPS on the Switch, which, you know, obviously, and lower graphical settings too. So, man, when I compare this to the Switch, when I compare this to so many different um, handhelds, this just stands out as being light years ahead in terms of performance, in terms of what it can do, in terms of um, the actual graphical um, experience of playing AAA games that I want to play. And then just, it's a great user experience in general. Not that the software is perfect. The software still needs to mature. The drivers still need to mature. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I recommend it. Now, when I compare this, I, I want to do one last, I guess, statement before we end this. How does this stack up against a gaming laptop, right? If you're talking about a budget entry level, like $800 gaming laptop versus this, I would buy this honestly over a gaming laptop that's 800 bucks, all right? Just this is this is going to provide almost as good of a gaming experience as an $800 gaming laptop, but this will be portable. This is meant for gaming. This is going to have better speakers. It's going to have uh, enough RAM. It's going to have 120 hertz high quality display. This is just going to be a better overall buy at the $800 mark against most other $800 gaming laptops. There might be a few exceptions out there, like if an Acer Natural 5 with everything, all the bells and whistles is out there and ha has 16 gigs of RAM and all that already pre-built in, then maybe that would be a competitor to this. But most $800 gaming laptops are going to be worse than this and or maybe a little bit better in performance, but worse in other ways, right? And then it's not gonna have the versatility this is gonna have and all that. But now when you compare this, say against a $1,500 mid-range gaming notebook, that's where it gets really tricky because the $1,500 RTX 3070 Ti or RTX 4070, that thing is going to play much higher FPSs and at much higher resolutions and at much higher settings all at the same time and it's gonna provide a whole nother premium tier of gaming experience above this. And the only way this thing can compete with that mid-range laptop is by getting the XG Mobile external GPU and plugging it in. And then you're gonna only get that level of experience when you take the XG Mobile with you. So yeah, and the XG Mobile experience is really primarily all about docking it at home at a monitor with a keyboard and mouse in my opinion. So, so yeah. Can I recommend the ROG Alley? Absolutely. Should you abandon your gaming laptop and just buy this? Only, I would say, if you're in the market for another really low-level budget um, gaming laptop. Otherwise, I mean, in some ways, you could buy this in like an Ultrabook that's not really meant for gaming, so you have like two devices. Um, alternatively, you can get the XG Mobile or you can just get a more expensive gaming laptop. And the main advantage, I think, with the going with the gaming laptop as well, if you buy a 15, 16, 17 inch gaming laptop, or even a 14 inch, the display size on a gaming laptop provides for an entirely different level of immersion and detail of the images that you're looking at. So um, constantly when I was playing The Witcher 3, I was noticing that I had to pull this closer to my face to read quest text or to read the subtitles or whatever, or just see the details of the game that I'm playing. Um, and so I tend to want to hold this closer to get the same visual experience. 
of a laptop that's further away from me. So in general, I still much prefer playing on my Blade 18 or on my desktop with the giant monitor compared to playing on this. But I gotta say that in terms of overall gaming experience, this is not far behind. And for $800, it provides an excellent value for gamers looking for an overall platform that also say they want a, a PC, they get this plus maybe a USB-C dock. And for like 850 bucks, they got themselves a PC that they can hook up to their monitor, keyboard and mouse and do significant awesome gaming at 1080p resolution with an external monitor or even higher resolutions as we show, as I showed you in today's live stream. So, so yeah. Uh, Britt Allen says, are you gonna keep it? I think so. I mean, I think this thing is gonna be awesome to take with me on airplane trips, um, driving around Texas, we're, I'm going to be on road trips, um, you know, went to San Antonio a couple of weeks. I would love to have this thing with me, um, on the road trip, you know, being able to sit here, uh, sit there in the car, playing the latest game, whatever on the road trips, that'd be awesome. Um, or just like, I want to hang out with, uh, Carla in the living room. She wa she's watching some show. I can be there next to her instead of in another room gaming. Um, you know, I can be there in her presence while gaming on the couch with her or something, you know? So, um, I think there's a lot of advantages to this. The versatility of this is next level. And I think that's really the biggest thing about it compared to a gaming laptop or a gaming PC. The versatility is awesome. Um, and I just love to see where we're gonna be in like say five years with this type of technology. Like we're gonna be seeing the current RTX 4090 graphical power probably in a handheld this size, say in five, maybe maybe a little longer. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but it's like a 4090 gaming laptop, not desktop. Laptop performance is gonna be uh, a lot easier to hit. But either way, this thing's awesome. Uh, LSP says, cool, no Blade 18. No, I love my Blade 18, but uh, I would probably use the Blade 18 for when I'm uh, gaming by myself or I don't wanna be next to Carla or whatever. So um, that's probably the primary difference. It's just the versatility. If this is more versatile in terms of where I can play, um, Easily, I just unplug this and take this with me, put my AirPods in and connect my AirPods and then I can play anywhere in the house without bothering anybody. Um, and I can be there in their presence. Uh, but I also, I need my Blade 18 for my live streaming and everything. I'm still streaming right now off my Blade 18. I don't think, I'll, you know, you could live stream with this. You totally could. This is powerful enough to do live streaming straight from the device and maybe even playing the game. I'm not sure if it could actually handle streaming and playing at the same time, maybe. But, um, Definitely could handle live streaming straight. Um, this kind of thing, like cap capturing the cameras and then doing the live stream. That would not be a problem for something of this graphical power because this is equal in, C in terms of CPU power, very close to what my old Legion 7i was that I used to do live streaming with only a few months ago. And that's to me is crazy. That is so crazy. Anyway, all right. There's my review of the ROG Ally. I did buy this with my own money. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you did, slam that like button. And if you want to help support me, use the links in the description if you buy any accessories or whatever. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Bye-bye.